Welcome, everybody, to the Fantasy Football Buff channel, the channel that is dedicated to the art, to the art, to the craft of Dynasty Fantasy Football. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Josh. This is my guy, Noah Guy. We're out here uh, on the channel where we talk about everything Dynasty related. We talk Dynasty strategy. We talk t Dynasty trade values, the up and coming rookies. We talk about anything dynasty related we're going to be talking about it on this channel so if that's something that you're interested in something that you're already involved in or something you want to get into i would consider hitting that subscribe button like in this video because we will be grinding out dynasty content all off season this year uh, our goal here is to guide you to a dynasty championship for for years to come right well and one of the things that we focus on here on the channel is actionable advice i mean it is so easy to jump on a youtube channel and say hey man x player is an rb1 or he should be a top 10 dynasty asset at his position but dynasty is so complicated right so here we really just talk strategy on this page and today we're going to debate the exact value and what you should be doing with players who suffered major injuries this past season, right? We're going to talk about guys like Joe Burrow, Saquon, Kenny G, right? See what you should be doing in your dynasty leagues, whether you should be trading for them, whether you should be holding them and exactly what value you should be expecting from them. That being said, I will always put the timestamps of each player in the comments below in the description of this video. So if you're looking for someone specific, uh, scroll down there and it should bounce you right to that specific moment of this episode. That all being said, guys, let's get it. Oh. Guys, set your calendars, right? Set your calendars right now. Go to your calendar app Monday, December 11th. Noah will be flying across the country from Florida to here, snowy Salt Lake City, Utah, to come watch the college uh, football national championship with me. Bama facing Ohio State here. Uh, and we'll be and we're going to be answering your dynasty questions at halftime, right? So go DM me on Instagram at fantasy.football.buff. Leave a question, a dynasty question in your comments below. We're going to be printing it out. We're going to be jumping on a live stream here on YouTube. And at halftime, we're going to be answering all of your dynasty questions. So hit that little bell button that gives you a notification when we upload stuff. Because uh, it's not going to be something you're going to want to miss, right? Mark your calendars, cancel your dates. Well, I don't know what you're doing, but make sure at halftime you're watching that live stream. All right. We want to talk about actionable advice. Let's talk about some actionable advice. Last night, we made a trade in our league. Noah and I are in a nice <laughs> league trade together. And I'm sitting here, guys, for context. I'm just hanging out. It's a what a Saturday night. I, I mean, we're quarantined. It's low key. I'm playing, I'm playing Smash Bros at this point. I'm a big Smash Bros oh. guy. And I get a notification on my phone. Now, I know it's like 11.30 p.m. And I know that Noah's in Florida. And they're two hours behind us. And I see, I've been trying to get DJ Char for a little while now. I'm really excited to see what he does with Trevor Lawrence under center. <laughs> I mean, he balled out with Gardner Minshew on the trash offense of the Jags over the past two years. Uh, and he offered me Denzel Mims. Oh, no, sorry. He asked for Denzel Mims and my 2021 high second round pick for DJ Chark. And I looked at it, man, and you guys know I love Denzel Mims. And you know how excited I am for this upcoming draft. So I was hesitant to give Noah such so much for this, especially if the Jets end up picking Justin Fields. I think Mims is going to go off. So I insisted on him giving me the last pick of the draft as well. He had the 30th, I think. It's uh, the pick yeah, of the draft. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just so I had two picks of the draft, just so I had someone to grab before uh, <laughs> the, the draft ended. You know what? Give me your thoughts behind this. It's one in the morning. You know that Trevor Lawrence is coming to Jacksonville, right? You know, the, the I mean, I so live you, in Jacksonville. You live in Jacksonville, man. <laughs> you, you know that DJ Shark, you know how good he was, Shark was. I mean, you draft him in the seventh round of our startup draft over guys like Terry McLaurin, right? So you clearly valued him. What? What motivated you? I mean, you got a haul, right? I'm not going to pretend like you just yeah, gave him up. But, yeah. but, but what, what, what convinced you as, <laughs> as the our viewers are interested in potentially buying low on DJ Chark? 
I just really, DJ Chark had been, we, we, honestly, what really kicked it off was when we were talking on the other video yesterday, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And we were, you were the, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and mine was DJ Chark, man. I wasn't mad, I was just disappointed. And I was like, man, like it was kicking me, killing me all year that I didn't yeah. take Terry McLaurin or Tyler Lockett in particular mm -hmm. um, instead of DJ Chark. And it just, it, it, it doesn't seem as if he fits my team because I need, more i neither needed a more surefire mm. veteran receiver yeah or i needed to get younger because okay. dj shark in my opinion is the perfect young player to have mm. in a content for a contenders lineup absolutely you know so like yeah. your team what was the high score in our league missed the playoffs but was the high score in our league mm. and so you're obviously a contender yeah. And he makes sense because he's a guy that as your other receivers get older, he should be kind of getting groomed into that 26, 27, 28 year and be able Absolutely. to kind of go into it. Oh, but for yeah. my team, I needed either, I couldn't be in that tweener stage. I need to be old where Devontae yeah. Adams is, is essentially type of, yeah. or I needed project. Mm, yeah. And so I was like, I don't think I'm going to get old. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have to give something else yeah. to yeah, get you old. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. And so I was like, I know Josh wants DJ Chark. Josh has, we have a lottery for our, for our top four picks and he yep. won the losers bracket. So he has the highest chance. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm he so has, honored. <laughs> yes. Yes. And he has the highest chance of getting the first overall pick. He has a 40% chance of getting the overall pick. Correct. Yeah. And then 40%. second place has 30. Mm -hmm. I have 20 and then yep. last place has 10. So I'm yep. like, okay, more often than not, I'm probably going to have the third 1.03 which will give me the 2.03. And I'm like, I want more than that. And also by getting Josh's pick, mm -hmm. I get to root for two people in the lottery bingo. <laughs> Cause I'm not it's only true, rooting man. for yeah. myself to get, to be high up on the 1.01, 1.02. I'm yeah. also rooting for Josh. If Josh's name gets called and it's 1.01 goes to Josh, I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, you know, exactly. like I'm stoked. Yeah. And I was just looking, you know, I've been doing a lot of digging into because players are starting to finally be like, yeah, I'm declaring for the draft. Yep. No, I'm staying in mm -hmm. school. So I'm starting to be like, okay, we're for seeing sure, how draft order is establishing as well. Yeah. And so I'm like, I got, and you made a great point. Draft picks are never going to be cheaper than right yeah, now. It's true. This is this, if you're going to get draft picks right now, it's the time to do it. Cause if you're trying to get draft picks in end of March, it ain't happening. Yeah, exactly. And you're going to be paying yeah. so much more. And I was like, yeah, if I'm going to get Josh's pick, I got to do it now. I got to yeah. be willing to gamble. I got to be willing to roll the dice to get what I want. And I know I'm not saying who I want. <laughs> and and, and I, I can't until after the draft. I was even yeah. texting my brother last night, who's also in our league. And I was like, he was like, don't tell me. Cause he has, the, my brother's going to have the, the, the last pick. He won the league. So he's going to have one point. He's going to have the 10th pick. So yeah. I could be picking either right behind him or two spots behind him. Yeah, so you don't want like, him to know. Yeah. My brother's like, don't tell me who you like, because if I find him and I pick him because I found him, then okay. But it's different mm -hmm. when I tell my brother who I like, and then he's like, well, I like him too now that you said something. Absolutely. So yeah. it was really, and then uh, Denzel Mims, you know, he he was had the draft. He has the draft capital behind yep. him. Yeah. Preferably new, good. new yeah. coaching staff. Mm -hmm. And I'm personally cool with Sam, I, I, worst case scenario, Sam Darnold's his quarterback next year. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Absolutely. As, as the Denzel Mims owner, I'm cool with that. Yeah. I get an awesome second round pick. It mm -hmm. gave me five picks in this upcoming draft Four, yeah. three in the top 14. Wow. Four in the top 20. Yeah. Um, five in the top 24. <laughs> and this is the draft class to do that, man. That, that was my biggest hesitation hitting except on that draft because I felt I probably could have held on to Denzel Mims and just traded a second and probably a lesser piece had it been like the night before the draft. Right, had it been the night before the end, you were sitting there and you're like, oh man, I know exactly who I want. You had that guy's name written down. You probably would have made the trade. Uh, but I also wanted to make the move prior to our lottery settling because I wanted to hopefully get the Taylor, uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence and DJ Chark stack. Regardless, regardless, dude, I think it's a win-win. I'll probably get blown up in the comments, it's, but it's I liked a, it. it. It's I, I think it's a win-win and I'm yeah. hoping that you get the 1.01 and I'm the 1.02 <laughs> and I'm hoping we just ended up swapping yeah. Let's say Justin Fields goes to the Jets. I take mm -hmm. Justin Fields with the 1.02. 1.02. I hope we end up just swapping those. And yep. I just happen to snipe that second round pick from you, which <laughs> is like, 
I'm on cloud nine because yeah. of that. Because I've been looking to try to get a top, another top 14 pick. Yeah. For um, six weeks now. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've been trying to figure it out. So yeah. this it worked out perfectly. And I told Josh, I go, if I get the 1.01, mm -hmm. or if you get Lawrence, mm -hmm. if I'm trading you DJ Chark, his value goes much higher if yep. I'm sending you a, a, a stack. Exactly. Like quarterback receiver stack. Yep. I go, exactly. and so if you want him, you got, and that's what Josh knew that. And so yep. he's like, you know what? That's well, why I came paid to for him now. We can, yeah. yeah, we came to a compromise. I kind of take a little bit more of a gamble on Denzel Mims in the draft pick. Yeah. You get a more solidified piece. You get oh, the yeah. last pick of the draft, which hurts me, but whatever. I love it. And we move on. But I no, love it, man. Great trade. It was a great trade. I'm very happy we got something done. I'm very excited. Guys, for those watching, man, I do definitely think that DJ Chark is a buy, man. I know you look at his stat sheet, and if you're the owner, you're frustrated, right? You have to be. But just look at that quarterback play. Man, look at look at, I mean, totally. Have, like, and just to consider how great Trevor Lawrence is, and the fact that I mean, G DJ Chark was only what twenty four years old. I mean, he's yeah. Oh no, yeah, young. super. Yeah. And I, you know, I didn't sell him because I don't think he's going to do well. Yeah. I just no. sold him because I liked Denzel Mims, and I really wanted that draft pick. I know it. Yep. And no. I'm with you, and man. With, with that being the case, you know, I mm -hmm. think I think initially we're, we're going to get eight weeks into the season next year. And Josh is going to be like, dude, that was such a great trade for me. Yeah. Like it's helping me propel my team. And I'm going to be thinking like, oh, did I really just do that? <laughs> you know, but oh, yeah. I got to, You know, I got to trust the process, stick with what I got. And I really actually like the makeup of my team so much more now after that trade. Hell yeah, man. I love it. Oh, I, love I have it. to add. Yeah. I, so I traded, I got to tell the other part of my, cause I had oh. two trades last night. Absolutely. Man. You've been busy. So the reason I did that trade with him and gave up that 30th pick is because my brother, the jk dobbins owner owned my third round pick mm -hmm. um from a trade that we did earlier much in the earlier season. third round pick and yeah. it was going to be it's going to either be the 301 302 303 304 mm -hmm. and yeah. versus the 310 and he said i'll give you that third round pick back if you give me gus edwards which allows mm -hmm. him to get that handcuff assuming the ravens re-sign gus edwards and It'll if not he gets it. another running back and my brother needs running backs yeah so i'm like i'm like I said, all right, let me get this deal done with Nino. And then I'm pressing accept on Josh's trade. So I still kept the same amount. I added a draft pick. I didn't go out even. So. Yeah. You have an even earlier draft pick. I remember when I asked for that last pick of the draft, it sounds like you have some sleeper that you don't want to talk about that. We will be revealing on the channel after the trades, after the our draft, which will happen right after the NFL draft happens. Um, but it sounds like you wanted someone really specific. You didn't want me to snipe you. So I'm Dude. glad that you got your guy. There are, um, there are maybe five or six guys I'm looking at at the yeah. end of the draft. Mm -hmm. And it really, those five or six guys that I'm looking at really depends on where they land. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about it. I was like, you know what? My draft strategy is I'm drafting talent that I like. Mm -hmm. And if it's a tiebreaker, so like, for example, like, last year would have been like a cd lamb versus justin jefferson type of thing yeah because oh, yeah. If, in my opinion if you put cd lamb on minnesota he's doing just he's doing the exact same thing justin jefferson's doing interesting yeah and yeah. so at that point you got to look at it all right what what where do you what position do you like like where what team what fits you like more yeah. so oh, talent yeah. first scheme second absolutely my opinion. yeah yeah no, that's how dynasty should be man we see time and time again if you follow the the talent things end up uh, they end up panning out i mean terry mclaurin should not be good it's to t like if you look oh, at his surroundings, yeah. he should not be yeah. a good fantasy receiver but especially he is, on that he's roster yep. exactly exactly but anyways absolutely man digress i love it i love it i love that people get a little view into what uh, our day-to-day -day is like and our <laughs> league it's it's awesome man. It, it is a little crazy i'm not gonna lie i was sitting in bed at like 12 30 uh last night just like watching dj chark highlights just to make sure that I made the right move. You know? <laughs> so, like, all right, so, I'm feeling better, man. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's awesome. All right, guys, let's transition to what this episode's about. And we're talking about key injured players throughout the league and what you should be doing about it. Now, I need to preface this. Uh, we're not doctors, right? We're not, I'm not going to pretend that I have so I'm not going to pretend to know the intricacies and like the uh, recovery timelines and whatnot when it comes to these crazy different injuries. So don't hold my, you know, don't hold all the medical advice that we'll be giving in this episode. Uh, to that same level we're just trying to explain what we've read on each injuries and what we understand of what happened and what their recovery timeline looks like and then what you should be doing with or for that player right so let's move into the first guy i mean we'll be talking about let's start with quarterbacks right there are two major quarterbacks we're going to talk about in this episode and the first one's dak prescott man now i am the dak prescott owner in our league i traded for him right before the injury uh, which was devastating to watch. Uh, and I did make a video earlier in the season about Dak Prescott, but we're going to loop it around one more time. Uh, he did have a compound right ankle fracture, 
and dislocation on October 11th. And they projected him, he had surgery, successful surgery that very night. And they projected him to recover between four to six months after the injury. Now, reportedly, he's ahead of schedule, right? Everything went well, and he should be, he should be 100% healthy come April. Right, he should. This isn't, from what I understand, and again, not a medical professional, but from what I've read, it doesn't sound like it's an injury that's going to linger on over the next 12 to 18 months. He should be back to 100% health at the start of next season. Now, there are a lot of complications when it comes to the finances um, right now with the Cowboys. I mean, we all know Dak Prescott was on that one-year deal. They have yet to establish anything long-term, but all reports out of the Cowboys front offense is that Dak is the guy, right? And somehow they were winning games, and so they don't have a super early draft pick like I was really afraid if they somehow ended up with a top two draft pick and just lost the rest of the season that they draft fields but it doesn't look like they're going to have that high of a pick uh and all the words out of the Cowboys front office is that Dak is the guy in 2021 so I mean let's let's start uh Noah with you man like what do you think will happen if he's 100% going into next season uh, the draft free agency everything what do you think will happen with Dak from a contract perspective contract perspective very yeah. good question um I think I think it's going to be two things. I yeah. think it's either two things. A, I don't think the Cowboys want to make him the highest paid quarterback. I agree. I agree. Um, and Dak, obviously, and his agent, obviously, are going to be fighting for him making being the highest paid quarterback. It's just it, they have their obligation to do that for their client yeah. as Dak Prescott. Do you think he'll be more understanding after the injury, after seeing how valuable a long-term injury is? Or, I think uh, his I think his agent's smart and goes, dude, see, you had that injury and you were lucky. Imagine if it was actually bad and it was career-ending. You need to get your money now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, no. so I think yes and no. Okay. Um, I personally think what's going to happen is they're going to come down to a little bit of compromise and they're going to make him maybe a top four absolutely paid yeah. quarterback but if that comes down to my opinion Dak being like okay i'll take a little less yeah um because if not he's gonna get the kirk cousins treatment yeah. and he's gonna get franchise tagged and franchise tagged and franchise tagged until they're like all right we're done with you yeah, yeah. so at that point and, and, and honestly at some point you got to be like okay well do i want to sign this not as lucrative deal but gives me guarantees yeah or do i want to sign this one-year deal and always have to be rolling the dice yeah. Um, yeah. And you have to ask yourself: Is there is there a big difference between forty five and sixty million dollars? Of course. Yeah. But it's still yeah. forty five to sixty million dollars. Yeah. So. Yeah. Absolutely, man. So I, I like. It sounds like the two options, right? It doesn't really sound like there is a situation where he either retires as people were like suggesting right after he got injured or they bring in a rookie, right? Those two situations don't sound likely. It sounds like he's either going to get a franchise tag or a long term deal. Now that all being said would now be a buy low window for Dak Prescott, right? Cause you think about it, he should be hundred percent healthy going into that, uh, going into next season. We all know about the insane offensive weapons and a hey man, Kellen Moore is going to stay there. He's not going to, uh, he's not leaving. He's locked. And I think he just signed a new contract too with the Cowboys to be their offensive coordinator. And dude, I mean, we saw, we saw Dak Prescott be the quarterback one over the course of the first month before he got injured. So whether he's franchise tagged, whether he has a long-term contract, I feel like as soon as that happens, his value is going to skyrocket. Right? Exactly. People are going to look at him and be like, oh man, no, he's locked in for good. Should now be the window that our listeners should go buy him. Well, and here's the thing. You got to you gotta even, I, yes, I do think so. But you also got to look at it. What if the Cowboys and Dak just decide to walk away from this? And oh, they so. and Dak, Dak goes elsewhere. Oh yeah. No, what I mean, if what if the, the Broncos what if what if the Broncos come out and go, hey, we'll pay you, we'll make you the top paid quarterback and you come join yeah. our offense? Or what if Carolina does it? The Carolina won't because they're still locked in with Teddy B's contract yeah. for now. They're rookie, they would be rookie incentivized. But what if you get a team like Denver or a yeah. team like the Patriots going like, Hey, we'll throw all the money at you? Like, come, come. Yeah. Like, well, we'll do it. We'll we'll yeah. build a team around you. We believe in you, you know? And then at that point, it's like I think I it's do you want, and at that point, you got to ask yourself, was Dak a product of the Cowboys offensive line, running back and receiving core? Because I mean, that's arguably the most dynamic offensive weapons on paper in yeah. the NFL. Oh, yeah. Outside yeah. of probably the Bucks, And I mean, on paper, the Bucks are the scare in the, the Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah. The Chiefs. You know, yeah. Outside of those two teams, you know? Yeah. Um, 
in terms of passing offenses are their most prolific. So yeah. going to Denver, obvious step back in terms of talent. Going to New England, huge step back in terms of talent. So yeah. if you're going to buy Dak, you buy him now. Yeah. And you, like how me and Josh are both rolling the dice with our guys that we on the trade we just did. You got to be rolling the dice and go, hey, I hope this just works out for me. And if not, I guess it is what it is. Yeah. You know? So if you if you want Dak, if you believe in it and you want – you're not buying Dak. You're buying, hopefully, the, the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. Exactly. Because that yeah. is the most prestige. Outside of owning <clears throat> outside of owning Patrick Mahomes, yeah. that is the best quarterback to have in, in Dynasty football. Yeah. Is whoever is the quarterback for the for the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, yeah. Considering the scheme, considering the weapons, I agree with you, man. I agree with you, and especially like, uh, just to highlight your point even more, I just I looked this up really quickly. Over week eleven to week sixteen now, so it's five, six weeks, whatever that is. Uh, Andy Dalton's been the fantasy uh, quarterback eleven in that stretch. Exactly, right? and, again, and it's Andy Dalton. I mean, right? Andy Dalton won won Nino the leak exactly no exactly you know? and i don't think and i think dak prescott of course is more talented than andy dalton oh, is yeah and he's gonna give them a better chance to win games so that just hi further highlights the point of if you buy him low now i think he's going to be your guy uh going into the season so this is my final question again actionable advice for everybody here i uh, i still see dak prescott as a top tier guy maybe i'm biased man maybe i got the love goggles on he's on my team but he's still a top tier dynasty quarterback for me i mean he was He's been producing that way, and I believe he's going to be back to that top tier uh, produ uh, production this fall as well. And I understand that it's risky because we don't know where he goes. But even like you said, even if he goes elsewhere, it's because someone's paying him, right? It's more convenient for him to stay in Dallas or get money elsewhere. Regardless, teams will be investing in him. Um, so actionable advice. I know it's risky, but if I was a contender right now, Right. If you're in a two quarterback league and you want a, a top five quarterback over the next potential, at least next one to two years, and then even more so in the next five years, I do believe that Dak Prescott's that guy. And I, I might get a lot of hate for this because I know that it, it's rookie season. And everyone's so excited about Trevor Lawrence and everything. But if I was a contender and you somehow had an early pick, right, you somehow had Trevor Lawrence on your team. I would move. I, I think you could move right now, Trevor Lawrence for Dak in a piece, right? That that's how I see it. Where if I if I if the draft happens and I have Trevor Lawrence on my team, but I'm a contender, I think I could say, hey man, Trevor Lawrence is clearly the best prospect since Peyton Manning, right? I I know you want him because everyone's gonna want Trevor Lawrence as soon as he comes to the league. Give me Dak and plus something, and I, I, that's the kind of move that I would be making, even though you're giving up a lot. That's the kind of move I would make, man. And I know, I'm sure I'm going to get that one comment. Like, oh, you'd give up Trevor Lawrence for Dak. It's it's not that. It's that you can get Dak, who's going to probably produce more over the next couple of years, and, and a piece on top of that. So I, I don't know, man. That, that's that's kind of my perspective. What, what are your thoughts on that that trade in particular? No, I, I think that's a great, I think that's a great trade. And even if you're like at the 1.0, let's say someone has just like the biggest crush on Trevor Lawrence and you yeah. have the first overall pick and the guy that wants that has the biggest crush on him is at like 1.09. Yeah. You're like, oh, Hey, yeah. Yeah, I'll, yeah, trade, yeah. I'll trade back and you give me Dak. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll trade back to the 1.09. Yeah. And you give me Dak and we call, you know, and you almost go like, I'll, I'll do that, you know, yeah. cause then you still get a top 10 talent in the draft and you get the quarterback. Exactly. You know? Cause if yeah. you're drafting quarterback in, in the top of your fantasy draft, more than likely you're quarterback needy. Yeah. You yeah. know, like you exactly. are not quarterback needy, but no, you can't yeah. pass on the talent, which I understand, no. <laughs> yeah. you know? And for yeah. and for me, I'm quarterback. There's so many teams in our league. You know, there's probably five or six teams in our league that could use a quarterback, at least one. Yeah. And yeah. so, I, I I mean personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed moving back so someone else could get a rookie, especially if you're a contender for yeah. for a young team like mine. I'm in a complete. I don't want to say rebuild. I'm because uh, I, I there's no rebuild. There was never anything built. I'm just in the build. <laughs> you know? We're on the second year uh, of our dynasty. I, I, year. I'm yeah. on the I'm on the Kickstarter. You I know? like it. I, I'm on Kickstarter. You know, trying to get people to sign up and buy my product <laughs> um, before we boom. Um, yeah. And for me, that trade doesn't make sense. I'm like, dude, yeah. I'll just take the rookie and I'll I'll ride out the rookie contract and go with that. But for a guy like you or a guy uh, who's ready to win now, if you you have Dak, I, I think that's a great, fantastic move. You know, especially. Like, dude, just sell the rookies high. You know, they're so, yeah. they always get so blown out of proportion every single yeah. year, every single off season. Mm -hmm. Like the best time to sell rookies is in August. 
yeah yeah right like if you draft someone season, even yeah. you can draft someone and not even like them just know that they're good and then you just sell them in august when training camp things are oh he's doing this he's doing yeah. that he's so good and you're just like hey i'll trade him to you. he's making no all the added catches yeah exactly yeah. and, and, yeah. and then you got a guy no way you'll give him up for me oh yeah i'll send you whatever it's like dude yeah. bam yeah Exactly. No, I agree. I agree. And that's when Dak Prescott, like you said, I mean, if he comes back and even has remotely close to the production, I'm not guaranteeing he'll be the QB one when he comes back, but I think he'll have, he'll be in that top five range uh, on a week to week basis when he comes back. Oh, that's Dak Prescott, guys. That's what I would do. Uh, let's move on to the next guy here. And that's none, another quarterback on my league, uh, on my team. Uh, apparently all my quarterbacks get injured, uh, but this is Joe Burrow, right? Joe Burrow, guys, on November 22nd, he had a, a severe left knee injury. I'm sure you've all seen it. He tore his ACL, his MCL, and he had partial tears in his meniscus as well. Now he is expected to fully recover, right? He's expected to fully recover, but we're not really sure when he's going to be fully recovered. Now, so his long-term value, I'm still excited for. I'm still excited for Joe Burrow's career, right? Five years from now, I still think he's going to be a stud, right? You and I have talked about how he's the potential to be the future Aaron Rodgers of this league, you know, where he's week in, week out, he's balling in fantasy. But what does it look like over the next 18 months? And that's kind of a tough question um, because, I mean, at the end of the day, he isn't a quarterback who for fantasy relies on his uh, rushing production. But, I mean, if he isn't expected, he, he got hurt November 22nd, man. He isn't expected to return until mid-2020, uh, mid halfway through the 2021 season. Right? So he's not even necessarily expected to start the season. And that halfway through the season is kind of pushing it, man. Like, who? Uh, it's it, we don't even know if he'll be at 100% at any point over the 2021 season. So here's my question for you, man. He is currently the quarterback nine on Fantasy Pros when it comes to a dynasty quarterbacks, which I still think is an excellent ranking for him. How should our listeners value Joey B? And what should they do, man? What, what, what's like, what's the answer? Because we don't even know if he'll even be on the field next season. And that's tough. That's tough to just give up, you know? And, and his injury is much worse. Uh, is much worse than Dak Prescott's yeah. because Dak yeah. Prescott's was hard tissue. It was bones. It was dislocation. Not a lot. Of, I mean, there was some ligament stuff, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but Teddy or not, sorry, it, Joe Burrow's knee yeah. injury reminds me of Teddy Bridgewater's mm -hmm. that yeah. whole knee dislocation. And Teddy Bridgewater's was so bad because he had nerve damage. But from the reports, it doesn't sound like Joe Burrow has that has those issues. Yeah. Yeah. Now, valuing Joe Burrow in a dynasty league is mm -hmm. tough because first off, you got to ask yourself, do you believe in Joe Burrow? Because there are yeah. some people that don't believe in Joe Burrow, which is yeah. totally fine. That's to each its own. Um, and I, I do like Joe Burrow. I think he's fine. I think he has that competitiveness that he has the it factor yeah. that, you, that is immeasurable. And he's looked good, man. Like he's looked good so far. I, I thought he did through on, his on start a depleted of the season. offense still. You know, yeah. he's got a couple of receivers, but he had no run game, no mm -hmm. tight end to throw to in a, a, a patchwork offensive line. Yeah, as a rookie. Yeah. So you know, I'm not, you know, as someone, I, you know, I studied athletic training at Florida State, so I'm, I'm, I'm no doctor, but I'm keen into it. Yeah, you I worked with a team, didn't you? I worked with the football team yeah. at Florida State, which was pretty sweet. But I learned from one of the physical therapists on staff there that the days of nine to 12 month recoveries on, AC, on knee injuries on ACLs is over. Yeah. They go, they don't think that it's, they think it's now 24 months total mm. before knees are entirely like, you're ready to go back to where you were before 24 months. So a whole two years, like that's pretty much saying Saquon isn't going to be Saquon until the 2022 season, the start mm. of it. Yeah. It's yeah. like, that's crazy. So if I'm obviously running back different than quarterback. So if I'm trying to value Joe Burrow, yeah, you got to look at where your team's at. And yeah. you know, if, if Excellent. you're yep. like for Josh, honestly, it doesn't hold, make a whole lot of sense to have Joe Burrow because he needs production this year, but he has so many quarterbacks, you know, he's got Pat Mahomes, Dak Prescott, yeah. probably a rookie quarterback. So he's got a Drew Locke, he's got options, but like mm -hmm. if you're a team that's old and you're headed towards the rebuild, you either decide, all right, Joe Burrow is a cornerstone of my piece, or I'm going to extend my window a little bit longer and by like maybe two years and I'm going to see what I can get for him. Interesting. Um, yeah. Interesting. But it's, it, it's tough. It's just a matter it, it really, to me, it's preference. Mm -hmm. On, yeah. do you do you feel like for me like my team I, i'd be down to i would have joe burrow i'd have no problem with sitting and waiting on joe burrow and yeah. just be like when he's ready i'm ready to roll him out yeah but 
Yeah. It's, again, it's it's so dependent on where your team's at. If your team is in a win now mode and yeah. you're good at quarterback, maybe you think about trading Joe Burrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. It's very interesting that you say that. And I'll actually disagree with you a little bit when it comes to uh, what uh, my strategy on, on my team specifically, because I, I think if I didn't have Joe Burrow, I would be the dynasty owner who's trying to play a little bit more chess than checkers, right? Trying to look, you know, five steps down the road and acquiring Joe Burrow now, right? I have Patrick Mahomes, I have Dak Prescott, and I have Drew Locke, right? And I know, and I'm confident that that Dak Prescott and Drew Locke will have some kind of fantasy value next season. Right? I'm confident those two will have something. But the year after, like you and I talked about, where there's no guarantee that Dak will stay with the Cowboys past next season, right? There's no guarantee that Drew Locke will even be a Bronco past next season. So I'm thinking 2022, what do my quarterbacks look like? And I, I and I know that he'll be back 100% next season, So or in 2022. So if you guys, I would only be buying Joe Burrow if I was comfortable with my quarterback situation. Right, that's the only way I would be buying Joe Burrow right now. Like I know on your team, uh, we're in a two quarterback league, and you have uh, Kyler Murray, uh, Teddy B, and are those the, uh, who else? You have one other guy, don't you? Or are those the only uh, Malcolm two Perry is quarterback eligible? <laughs> Malcolm Perry a touchdown today. Is quarterback eligible? So he, if I was you, I wouldn't necessarily, at least not for next season. I'd be a little hesitant just because what value is he providing you next season? Right, and it, I mean, it's a great so, point. So I don't know. So that, that's the way I see it. Just it, it be, expect to have Joe Burrow back. 2022 if he's back earlier that's a blessing man that's awesome we're excited he's going to be on the field hopefully he's makes that recovery hope he doesn't get re-injured but don't don't buy him now expecting him to be back in 2021 lower your expectations uh, but that's what i would do i try to buy him so let's i mean a great again actionable advice for the uh, for the listeners uh if i had a gun to my head and i had a trade offer right now who cares what your team looks like but if i had to choose tua or joe burrow I would be choosing Joe Burrow right now, right? And that's because of my belief in Joe Burrow. That's because of uh, I'm excited about the Zach Taylor scheme. I love the offensive weapons there. I'm excited about that future and, and see if they upgrade that uh, offensive line as well. And it's, it's, it's a little bit of shade towards Tua as well, man. I'm not, I, I get it's his rookie season uh, and he did throw multiple touchdowns today. So maybe my perspective is a little tainted, uh, but I would much rather have Joe Burrow over the course of his career over the next five years than Tua. I don't know, man. That's just what I've seen so far. I, I can I, agree Let me hear what you think. Yeah. Um, I will say on the Tua aspect, I think he needs a mentor at the quarterback yeah. position. I think Brian Fitzpatrick mm-hmm. is essential to his growth. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. And I, I really do miss the old days of the NFL where rookie quarterbacks sat for a year or two mm-hmm. before taking over. And, and I really miss understood that. And the fans all knew that, right? They weren't like clamoring for the rookie to get on. They're like, no. But now it's yeah. so it's complete opposite. They're like instant gratification. Oh, yeah. We drafted him. Let's see him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> if not, fire the head coach, right? Yeah, yeah dude, exactly. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think two, two is just more of a project. And, you know, he's got his hip coming yeah. back. But I guess I'm curious. Um at what point as as someone that is a contender as someone yeah. that has going to have the quarterback depth for next year yeah what would it take what, what 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 kind of package would you be looking for where you're like okay i'll trade away joe burrow especially if you're looking at 2022 yeah of him being yeah. like the guy for you or like the number two guy but him and pat mahomes yeah um what 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 would it take for you to be like i'll sell him at this price yeah especially given right now because That's, yeah over the next nine months mm-hmm. joe burrow's stock only keeps going down yeah yeah i totally agree no i totally agree so i i I will answer your question just in the same stock perspective right his value is currently at one of its lower peaks than it probably will be the rest of his career and like you said moving forward it will just continue to drop so if i i it's for everyone listening i offered you yesterday uh or a couple days ago i asked for cd lamb and a pick for Joe Burrow. We're in a two quarterback league. I know you need a quarterback. I know you and I see eye to eye on the uh, potential of Joe Burrow. And and you told me you were offended. You're like, Josh, you kidding me? That's the kind of offer. Joe Burrow only has one functional leg right now. And and the reason uh, I even made that offer is because I think that offer will work uh, halfway through the 2022 season. Right. I think I could make that offer where I could get a top tier wide receiver and a pick for Joe Burrow in a two quarterback league. I, I do believe that is 
what is most likely to happen because of the team investment in him, because of his natural talent, because of everything we've already talked about. Uh, and because of that, I'm being patient, right? Because of that, I don't, I probably won't be entertaining a lot of offers right now. Just because it's same, uh, same reason why I barely hit the accept button last night on the, the DJ chart for that second round pick, because I know in two years from now, I think I'll be able to get so do much you, more for him. Next year, do you, are you planning on putting Joe Burrow on your taxi squad? I could. I mean, at this point with my quarterback squad, I could, right? I have that luxury to do so. So I don't know, man. I see him less as like a fantasy I'm, player. I'm just more curious, a, like yeah. what you, as the owner, what you would, if you're trying to go out and acquire him yeah. for 2022, yeah. you say actionable advice. So what, mm -hmm. what, what is, what is that? What, what is that price tag in your opinion yeah. in a two quarterback PPR league? Yeah. So I, I I'll tell this to, Everyone's listening right now, man. If you have quarterbacks who are startable and you own Joe Burrow, then I'm holding him, right? I'm holding him because what all you're doing is selling him at a price that an, an, an unnecessarily low price, right? Like if his price is almost guaranteed to increase, which it's never guaranteed, but very, very likely to, to bounce up in two years from now, once he gets healthy, then throw him on your taxi squad. If you don't need him, then just hold, right? But, but if you need somebody right now, that's when you can have that discussion. But, I just don't feel my team does. But what if you're a... a, a what if you're a, trying to be a buyer of Joe Burrow? Oh, oh what, that's, an that's, that's my question. So yeah. what is your, what is the buy price of Joe Burrow at, which right is now? A, you have a very, yeah. in general, this off season, because you have mm. an interesting perspective of being the Joe Burrow owner. So I'm yeah. owner. So I'm curious, what is that buy price? Cause you, you would have a price on Joe Burrow. Obviously yeah. you send it to me. So yeah. I'm curious if someone were to come to you and be like, Hey, this is the offer I got. What, yeah. even in terms of draft picks or even in terms of high volume player or what it would be, yeah. or like, just curious it, it, that's a great question man that's and I, it's tough to have an answer because it is so team dependent like i personally because we play in a ppr league where we start two running backs two wide receivers a tight end and three flex spots i would be looking for a top tier young wide receiver right that's what i would be looking for i, I would be a personally i would not sell joe burrow unless i can sell joe burrow plus something for a justin jefferson or a CD lamp, something like that. Maybe not pleasant, but at least have that conversation. And it is very team dependent. And I don't even know if you can have that conversation right now is I guess the point I'm trying to make. Uh, because I think you can have that conversation in two years from now. But that, that's how I see it as the Joe Burrow owner. Maybe I'm crazy, man. Maybe I'm crazy. But I just know at the beginning of this season, he was looking really good, right? And if, if it wasn't for his injury, you and I, we would just be having such a different conversation. And I think he bounces back. But we'll see, man. I don't know. That's, that's my perspective. Do you, as someone... On the flip side, man, what do you think right now would be a reasonable price? What would you give up to give Joe Burrow right now? Uh, uh, I would probably give up my next year first and second round pick to get Joe Burrow right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's a very fair price because that's a either – and for my team, that's probably a top five pick. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I think that I'm, I think next year top five pick – two top 15 picks next year is probably what I'd be willing to give up interesting that's great to know that's great to know and then you i mean the viewer can kind of make that decision if they think that's worth it i don't know man i, I would have to do a little bit more but research I, and i also but... have five top exactly. i have five picks this draft so it's yeah. a little different you know so you're not <laughs> even concerned about future drafts man you're no. chilling yeah, yeah exactly but anyways that all being said guys in conclusion if your team's good now go buy joe burrow if not uh, it, it's tough i would still try to buy him just don't expect anything until 2022. I, hey, conclusion. I will say in our league, uh, yeah. is it is it is it Sagalicious who has uh, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady? Yep. Yeah. I think he would be a great person to try to get Absolutely. Joe Burrow. Absolutely. Two veteran guys, you know, and then after let's say Tom Brady retires, then you plug in Joe Burrow for him, and you got exactly. Aaron Rodgers, Joe Burrow. Yeah. There we go. We figured it out. Yeah, we figured it out, <laughs> man. That's the that's the perfect scenario. And I, I don't know. I don't think he subscribes to the channel, but if he does, man, we'll definitely have a conversation because he's got a couple pieces I'm definitely interested in. Uh, all right, man. Let's move on to the running backs. Those are the two quarterbacks we want to cover. Uh, let's talk about Christian McCaffrey. All right. Let's talk about CMC. I mean, if in redraft, you're probably really frustrated with him. Um, because he struggled with multiple different injuries this season, man. He only played three games this this throughout the entire season. That all being said, right? That all being said, Christian McCaffrey is a huge, he is a ginormous buy for me, right? He is still, from my perspective, the dynasty running back one, right? He was at the beginning of this season, and he is still the RB1 in dynasty for me for a number of different reasons. One, uh, Joe Brady's offense is looking nasty moving forward, man. It is looking so spicy. Like, I just love what they're doing over there. I, I'm excited about that Panthers offense, especially if they upgrade at quarterback uh, moving forward. 
and I mean, the, uh, the reality is he's only 24 years old and he's locked into that long-term contract, man. So he's going to be there and they're invested in him for a while. Uh, I'm buying him so passionately right now, if I even can, because I believe that he is currently healthy, right? I, I mean, he missed week 17. Uh, there's saying that he was tweaked his injuries. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I mean, the Panthers have nothing to play for at this point. Now, the Panthers have nothing to play for. They spent so much money on CMC uh, and he will, and that I believe he will be a hundred percent. There's just no point in playing him, right? Why play one of your major assets if you're not even going to make the playoffs at this point? So he will be a hundred percent starting next season. Um, and the main reason I'm buying him, man, is because he is elite every time he's on the field, right? I don't care what I don't care what the team is. I don't care what day of the week it is. Every time he's on the field, he balls, man. He had an insane record-breaking 2019 season, as we've talked about many times. And he averaged 29 points a game, right? He only played three games a season. And throughout those three games, right, he averaged 29 points a game. He played the first two games where he had, like, what, 20-something points? Comes back for a single game fully healthy, drops 37. I forget even who. I think it was, like, the uh, the Chiefs, or I forget what team they play. But regardless, when he's on the field, he balls. It feels like a cheat code. It, it's a cheat code, man. And so, like... <laughs> If you're the Christian McCaffrey owner, you're probably sitting there like, man, he's a year older now. He was struggling with injury, you know, this and that, this and that. Hold, hold and don't accept anything in like, cause you, this is the reality. If you're the Christian McCaffrey owner, you waited through the worst part of his injury, right? You waited through the 2020 season where it just sucked to own Christian McCaffrey. The future is bright. Every game he plays on the road, unless he gets re-injured, will be him falling out, right? So there's no reason to sell Christian McCaffrey unless someone is sending me a haul, right? Unless someone is sending me multiple first round picks and a piece, unless someone's selling, okay, Josh, here's my 2020 draft and a couple picks down the road, then I'll consider take, uh, selling Christian McCaffrey. Uh, if you're in a rebuild, maybe regardless uh, i there's a rebuild team in our league who owns christian mccaffrey and i'm telling them to hold because i think he's the perfect cornerstone for a rebuilding team um over the next three or four years and it's at least going to give you a glimpse of hope man anyways that's my perspective on christian mccaffrey it sounds like he'll be healthy next season and he has a legit backup in mike davis who i'm assuming will be back with his team next season Dude, what are your thoughts on Christian McCaffrey, man? I only played three games uh, this season. I was looking just through kind of like his news blurbs yeah, on uh, yeah. Roto World. And November 8, 2020, it has his stat line against the Chiefs in week nine. Was eight, he rushed 18 times for 69 yards, so not anything great. But yeah. he had a touchdown. So that's 15.9 points, fantasy oh points. Gosh. Yeah. Or 13.9, or sorry. 13.9. And then he caught 10 of 10 targets for 82 yards and a touchdown. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So he had... 18.2 plus six he had 24.2 points just as a receiver yeah yeah it's insane and i'm like dude that's unbelievable he gets yeah. he's a he's a 25 plus touch guy and it's in the most natural way it's ever happened yeah. i've ever seen for a running back like him touching the ball 30 times a game it's seems it like yeah. it, it's like oh yeah of course he is like oh yeah get the ball to him he's and it's like you look at him he's like oh yeah they threw to him he's open yeah. oh he's open again and he oh, took off with the ball and he can't get again. tackled and yeah. then he, he catches it every time it's like yeah. dude if you got christian mccaffrey mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it does it suck yeah was it disappointing yeah but when he was on the field you still got to see everything he's capable of doing you know and personally i think eventually i think eventually christian mccaffrey goes full-time receiver interesting I think he is that 10 to 15 year guy that lasts in the NFL. He'll play till he's like 35, 36. Wow. And the last bit of it will be as a receiver. Wow. Can you imagine, uh, I mean, a 30 something year old Christian McCaffrey coming out of the slot? Like just, he reminds me of like a, a more elusive, more explosive Edelman, right? Where he's just going to break your ankles, but now he's going to truck you and then disappear. Like I, I just, dude, Christian McCaffrey is such a baller, guys. Do not sell him after this season. If anything, try to acquire him. Try to see where the owner's at. But uh, I don't know, man. He's someone that's a huge buy for me right now. So let's transition, though, to – oh, oh, real quick before – just to wrap up with Christian McCaffrey. There was a lot of concern with him coming into the season. Just when it comes to, like, well, what's Matt Rule's scheme going to look like? What is is, uh, is Teddy B even going to target him? And then Mike Davis was getting an insane amount of targets. And then Christian McCaffrey saw those targets that you saw. Uh, do not be worried about Christian McCaffrey. In conclusion, there you go. All right, guys, let's move on to another uh, top-tier dynasty running back who struggled with injury this season. Uh, you own him, so you know the situation very well, and that's Saquon Barkley, right? Saquon tore his ACL week two, and he's expected to start the 2021 season, right? He's expected to be back, maybe not 100% healthy, but he's expected to be back at least the start of 2021. Now, 
Uh, ACL tears can be a little scary, right? He did. This is technically his second year struggling with injuries. He had that high ankle sprain last season that plagued him for the rest of the season, even though he came back at superhuman speeds. But guys, remember, I love using this example. Frank Gore tore both his ACLs in high school. Right? I love throwing that out there. It's Frank Gore tore both of them, and now he's playing at like 50 years old. So how can you? There's always hope. All players are injury prone until they're not. Right? So I personally had concerns for Barkley coming into 2020. I, I put out a video and I got a lot of hate for it. Where I was like, I don't know if he's a top three pick. Uh, just in the sense that that offense is kind of off and on with a new head coach coming in who has your experience in Joe uh, in uh, Judd, whatever his name is, Judd. Joe Judge. Joe Judge. Uh, we didn't know what kind of, I mean, Barkley had been seeing less targets with uh, Daniel Jones on the field compared to Eli Manning, who was pretty much playing in a wheelchair. And in 2018, when he had the RB1 season, a lot of it came from big plays, right, where he'd have a mediocre game and he actually led the league in runs of 20 plus yards. I said, well, I mean, it's clearly amazing talent, but if he regresses even a little bit, it's likely we see a couple less ceiling games. That's all I said, right? and I got a lot of hate for the video. That all being said, Wayne Gallman and Devontae Freeman produced this past season with Saquon out. I mean, they had spl- uh, little uh, you know, RB2 games here and there. And the reality is, is that not only is Saquon only 23 years old, he'll be 24 going into next season. He's a generational talent, and he's under contract for at least the next two years. So, I mean, here's my question to you, man. You're the Saquon owner. Is Saquon back to 100% strength, agility, explosiveness uh, at the beginning of 2021? And if not, how long do you think until we see 100% Saquon again? I, I really don't know. I'm... I'm he's just such a freak athlete yeah. i just think he's gonna demolish this rehab yeah i think um, so too but he also didn't have surgery immediately which was an interesting thing he they waited for a lot of swelling to get reduced i remember that um yeah. before he went and had surgery and that's supposed to help surgical outcomes mm-hmm. and which is cool i like yeah. that that's the case that they do it so like because surgery obviously it's going to get blown up like you yeah. come out of surgery your knee's going to get blown up um just with that's just the name of the game yeah. and so um but i was reading into it while you were while you were going on your blurb I, you mentioned his high ankle sprain on 2019 and so yeah. i go huh okay what leg did he hurt what acl did he tear it was his right one well what high ankles what side do you have his high ankle spray on his right one yeah, interesting. interesting and i was reading i was reading an article and i guess this off season he said that he was only in a boot on that high ankle sprain for two days, yeah. which is not nearly enough time. No, I mean, that doesn't essentially not. do anything. Yeah. And I don't know, for those of the, I don't know if you're interested, but high ankle sprain, do you know the difference between a regular ankle sprain and a high ankle sprain? Uh, not particularly, no. Okay, so you know how you have two bones in your shin? Absolutely. You have your tibia yeah. and your fibula? Yeah, yeah. Your tib fib. It's the, those have like a mesh in between those two bones. There's like a mesh that holds mm. those two things together. It's not like a ligament that you would see like in an ACL where it's like literally like a rubber band. It's yeah. mesh. And mm. so when you have a high ankle sprain, there is like a tear in that mesh. And it takes a really long time to get that mesh to heal. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm thinking the fact that he didn't let that heal could have contributed to him, you know, hurting that that right knee a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but as the Saquon owner, dude, I'm stoked. It happened week two yeah yeah it's you know sweet. like if yeah. you're gonna t- if you're gonna tear your acl at least have it be in training camp or have it be in week <laughs> with before week three damn you joe burrow for tearing your acl so late in the season man <laughs> and that see that was just yeah. disgusting because of the way oh, it yeah. happened but yeah. you know and no, i know what you're so, saying so as a saquon owner you know i'm i'm i feel pretty i i feel pretty good you know yeah. i liked i was and as a first year head coach going with the giants, I was excited. I was like, all right, the giants, it's like losing Steph Curry yeah. and you got to look around and go, all right, well, what's our basketball team without Steph Curry shooting yeah. threes, yeah. you know? And so you actually have to figure out who else can perform, yeah. which is only going to help the giants because over the past th- two uh, other two years, not his rookie year, but the other two years, it, you would look at him and you go, okay, if they don't get Saquon on the ball, they got nothing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so yeah. now they're, you know, they were fighting for a playoff spot today still. They lost, but, you know, they, or no, they're up to, it's up to what Washington does tonight. Washington, yeah, I'm pretty sure the Giants won. Giants won. won. The Giants yeah. won today. So the Giants could be making the playoffs if Washington loses tonight. And yeah. when this airs, we will know the answer. But, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, excuse me. But I'm look, actually looking forward to Saquon coming back. 
because I think the Giants as a team are going to be better off because they lost him. And then when they get him back, they're going to be like, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Interesting. You know? So here's – this is the question for you. Do Because he was clearly a very clear tier as the RB2 in Dynasty, if not the RB1. He was in that contention because of his age, because of his talent. Do you still see him as a top two dynasty running back, right? Right now, Fantasy Pros has Kamara and Dalvin Cook ranked over him, right? So if you're going into your startup drafts, you're probably sitting there like, oh, right, man. I don't even know if it's going to be 100%. Kamara and Cook are cooking right now. So anyways, how do you see it? Is he still a top two for you? Because I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer for that I don't question. have an answer either. Okay, interesting. I, I mean, here's the thing. Yeah. I love Dalvin. I went to Florida State. I watched Dalvin run there. I knew he was going to be awesome. Yeah. I mean, like, he is unbelievable as a runner, especially in the open field. Mm-hmm. It's tough. It's tough. Man. I mean, it has to be personal preference, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, obviously, I think you cannot pass on Chris McCaffrey 101. Yeah, I agree. You can't, you can't do it. You just can't do it. Like, I was I was like sitting in my chair when the draft started. I was like, please just take Saquon. Please just take Saquon. <laughs> exactly. You know? Just to mess up. Yeah. Yeah. Just please let, just <laughs> let it drop into my lap. That'll you know, and I'll hit that button yeah. so flipping quickly. But I, I, last year when I drafted Saquon, I was like, I just can't not draft Saquon. Yeah. Yeah. He's too good. You know, he's, he's too just, good. yeah. The, 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 you're buying the talent. Mm-hmm. Like, there is not anything that he can't do. Interesting. You know, it's true. No, of, it's true, man. Yeah. <laughs> like Christian McCaffrey is the better football player, mm. better route runner, has better hands. But Christian McCaffrey, athletically speaking, versus Saquon, yeah, it's not really even I, I obviously it's a competition. It's not even in a question. Like yeah. Saquon is obviously the better athlete, just pound yeah. for pound better athlete. Christian McCaffrey is just a much more nuanced and mentally a much better football player. Yeah. You know, interesting. So So I I will say this when it comes to dynasty rankings, it's always tricky because, again, very, very team dependent. I would not take Kamara, I would not take Kamara over Saquon, right? I would not take, I I I would take Saquon first. I would, out of those two, just because I am so much of Kamara's production comes out of the passing game. And I'm not sure what that's going to look like if Breeze retires, which apparently it's reported to do so. But if I'm sitting on the clock, and it's a one quarterback league, and I'm, I'm looking for a running back in my dynasty, dynasty startup, I would have a really hard time uh, between the Cook and Saquon pick. Me I'd too. have a really hard time, but they're only one year age difference. Cook is locked into that long-term contract. Right? I assume that they're going to pay Saquon, right? I assume they're going to pay Saquon, but uh, who knows, man? If things get weird once that all happens, at least Cook has a solid backup as well in case he gets injured. And I, outside of a major injury, Right, I know that. I mean, Cook balled out, man. He was the I, or RB two, I assume, right behind Kamara. This throughout the season, uh, he's just that good. And and if you're looking at, you have to take in 2021's production in any dynasty value, right? You have to say which running back's gonna, uh, which running back's gonna do better in 2021. I think that's gonna be Cook. I think Saquon can do it, but between the ACL recovery, between that offense in itself, I think it's most likely gonna be Cook. Uh, and that, that's just how I see it. That's how I, I value dynasty players. So, uh, he's still top three for me, for sure. Uh, if you can, if he's someone you can buy, I'd definitely be trying to do so. But if you, as the Saquon owner, as you and I've talked about before, every day that passes, every day that gets closer to the 2021 season, his value increases, right? Because you're one day. I was surprised. I didn't have more offers from him after the injury. I think a lot of people are off Saquon, man. I think they they just, after him kind of struggling with the high ankle injury the year before, after him getting shut up by the Steelers in week one, I think people are kind of like, I don't know, man. I feel like a lot of people are going to be shocked when he comes back and is still a baller, right? So I I don't know. What, what would you, what would you right now, if I were to make you a trade offer for Saquon, what would you want for him? If you yourself, I mean, I would yeah. need, I need the, obviously your first. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. I need your first next year. Okay, so two firsts, yeah. Um, or I would legitimately think about, I go, give me your first this year and Pat Mahomes and we got a deal. Okay, and we're into two quarterback league for everyone listening. And, and that, uh, I personally would be right on the line there. I think I would take, I would definitely take Matt Patrick Mahomes actually just because of how I value quarterbacks in two quarterback league. And I think Mahomes is going to be 20 well, points. And I my, think, and yeah. I think, I'd rather I every 10 out of 10 times I'd rather be on the first round pick in Patrick Mahomes yeah. 
side. But yeah. the reason that I would say that's what it would take because I'm not selling Saquon unless if it is something stupid awesome yeah. like that. Yeah. You know? I think you and I have a very similar perspective with your Saquon value and, and my with Joe Burrow, where it's like, why would I sell him now that he's hurt? Right. I could, but why don't I just wait till he's healthy? Everyone watches him ball and then I can easily make that trade. That's at least my perspective. Uh, and that will, it's an excellent transition into our next guy who is Joe Mixon, right? Joe Mixon, we've talked about a couple times on this channel. I, you know, everyone knows I love Joe Mixon going into the season of redraft formats, man. He worked, hurt his foot in week six and he didn't, he hasn't seen the field since man. He hurt, hurt his foot. He got in the end zone. He was up dancing, right? And then, and then he didn't come back into the game and the coaches were promising every single week that he's fine. He's going to be back. It just didn't happen, man. The now, worst. Joe, yeah, the worst, man. The worst, because I'd rather just have... hate coach talk. I, I hate, hate coach it, talk. Man. I hate it. I hate it. Hate it. Hate it so much. We just got to execute. Just we him. just got to execute. You know, <laughs> we had it there. We just got to execute. I hate when coaches say that. Just got to execute. So oh, my God. I was watching... Uh, I forget what it was. Oh, I was watching... Uh, the uh, Clemson Ohio State game with Scout, my, my wife, the other night, and I, I they were uh, interviewing uh, Dabo, and they were talking to him, and he said something like, "Well, we just gotta play better. We just gotta play better." And Scout's like, "Well, no shit." And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Coaches say that all the time. They're like, "Well, what happened? Oh, we just gotta play better." It's like, "Well, thanks for the advice, man. Thanks for the insight." Anyways, that all being said, Joe uh, Joe Mixon did not play better, right? He didn't play at all. He just like destroyed my redraft league. He's only, I mean, he is only 24 years old. He is still arguably, arguably a top five running back talent in the league. That's how I've always seen him. I still see him that way. Um, and he should be 100% coming into next season again because he's been struggling with this injury that he almost came back. So I assume next season he'll be 100%. Uh, and he does have the contract, right? And there was a lot of excited in this about this new offense this past uh, um, this past offseason. So he was the RB6 off the board in our startup league. Um, but that being said, man, like we said, we're not even expecting Joe Burrow to really be back to 100% until 2022. How do you rank him amongst dynasty running backs? Right? How do you rank? Because he has the talent. He has the contract. The team will likely struggle for another year. He'll be 26 at that age. Hit me with it, man. Because I don't know. I, I don't know. I was I got a question for you. Do you yeah. know? Do you know what his? Uh, where like fan? We reference fantasy pros. Yeah. What do you know? What he is ranked right now? Absolutely. Going I'll into the offseason, because. Honestly, at this point, I think the only way for me to really value, like, wow. I gotta go. Who, I, who would I take? Who, who am I? I who am I taking him over? Because yeah. the list is not. I mean, I'm taking a lot of people over Joe yeah, Mixon. Me too. Going me into too. this offseason, so I haven't even seen these rankings, and I, I had, I had written down, um, <laughs> in my little document here, I said that I had Joe Mixon outside of my top 15 dynasty running backs. That's yeah. where I put him, which is crazy considering he was drafted running back six. Uh, where do you think he's at right now? Just out of curiosity. In Dynasty. Personally, I'd probably put him RB18. Wow. He is the running back 17 in the Fantasy Pros. That was, dude, that was spot on, man. That was pretty amazing. But you know what's really funny is they have Joe Mixon 17 and your guy Cam Akers at 18. So, I mean, I, who would you rather take? That's a great question. Uh, dude, I'd, take Cam, I'd, I'd have Cam Akers over Joe Mixon yeah. every day of the week and twice on Sundays. <laughs> and I think that's a trade you can make. I think that depending on the, who the Cam Akers owner is, I think you could send out Joe Mixon, who has the name, who has the contract, who has the hype behind him, for a guy who Cam Akers, who is apparently on some kind of quote-unquote running back by committee, which we all know isn't true. Cam Akers is a baller, and he deserves to be ranked much higher than running back 18th in Dynasty, man, for sure. For sure, for sure. All right, that, that's the actionable advice, guys. Is it, Well, I, here's, here's the question. I talked to Nick L., who's in our league, who owns Joe Mixon, he doesn't know what to do. He was like, so like, bro, I, I own Joe Mixon. He was a first round pick for me. I have no idea what to do. What would you tell him at this point? See, it's the, you got, it's a fine line between selling what you can get yeah. and not being happy with what your return is. Yeah. yeah. Or diving head, head first into the sunk cost fallacy yeah. and being like, I'm riding this <laughs> trade until the end. <laughs> I'm sinking with this shit, man. That's what I'm doing. If I own Joe Mixon, I'm dying on this you shit. Got, man. You got to, you got to die on his contract yeah. that he got, you, got you know? Yeah. And unless if you're getting like, cause I think Joe Mixon's probably worth like a late first, early second round pick this year. Okay. Yeah. I could, see uh, that. you know, any, probably anywhere between 10 and 15, mm -hmm. but nothing, nothing more than that interesting like interesting. i would probably yeah. like if i'm going for joe mixon i'm like i'll give you the 13th pick that's it yeah and yeah, then and yeah i'd probably get a counter for like well we'll throw in like a next year third and i'd be like all right deal 
you know, or like a small piece, but like there's not a lot on pain for Joe Mixon. Yeah. Offensive line still beat up. Yeah. Coaching staff kind of still questionable on what they're going to do coaching staff wise and refuse to give him the lion's share of the carries man like dude, he's and playing. they're not they don't throw him the ball they don't no they don't throw yeah. him the ball it's like dude what yeah. are you doing like, why'd you he, pay I, him all I, this money yeah why'd i like you pay joe him? mixon i like yeah. joe mixon i don't like the coaching staff Interesting. you know and the coaching staff I, i'm a husker fan i'm a nebraska fan it's even a former husker and i'm like dude zach taylor what are you doing yeah. get joe mixon the ball and I, like I don't know Zach Taylor for Joe Burrow. I will say this. I like Zach Taylor for Joe Burrow and T Higgins. I don't like him for Joe, Joe Mixon just because we've seen him not get the ball. He's not getting the carries. Like he was a little bit before he got hurt, but that's what people are going to hinge their argument on. Personally, I would take Najee Harris and Travis Etienne over Joe Mixon a hundred percent of the time, right? A hundred percent. So that's just, he's already that's a good RB17. way of looking at it. I think, you yeah. know, I do think Joe Mixon is worth the third or fourth running back in this draft. Perfect. Perfect. No, I, I think you and That's I are on a the good same way page. Of putting it. So if you're the Joe Mixon owner, it might be a similar situation like the Joe Burrow, like the Saquon situation where don't sell low necessarily, depending on what you can get. I will very likely, if I were to own Joe Mixon, just hold for now. Hold the for only, now. Yeah. I think the only way you can trade Joe Mixon is if you're trading them to a very running back needy team. Yeah. yeah. And you can sell it. Hey, dude, he's got the contract. You know he's going to at least be on the team because they can't afford to cut him yeah he has shown that he was good like look at his last six or seven games last year 2019 when that offense started finally humming you yeah. know and you might be able to swing a deal where you can maybe swap for one of their receivers swap for one of their picks type of thing but unless if you're working with someone that has a running back roster need yeah. like honestly trey is a guy that could go out trey is a guy that uh has miles sanders as his top running back and after that yeah. his other running back is what devin singletary devin singletary and raheem mostert yeah you know like yeah he doesn't have a whole lot of running back but he also needs a quarterback so i could yeah. see trey being someone that like hey man like let me send you one of my receivers i'll take joe mixon mm -hmm. and you know we go from there yeah man yeah absolutely i, I think that's a great example uh, and just to wrap this up put a bow on it man again actionable advice that's what we live by here um if you were to have the trade offer you're the joe makes an owner someone reaches out and offers you james robinson right who's 22 years old who just balled out this past season uh who has the upside if trevor lawrence comes in and carries that offense as we're expecting him to but we're not sure he's gonna get the lion's share of the work man would you take the upside of james robinson or the floor contract of joe mixon i think i would have to take the joe mixon because you gotta you gotta look at yeah. what did you pay to get james robinson I guess so, but you have to like... The return on the investment is unbelievable, what you yeah. would be getting, you know? You wouldn't be giving up much, and uh, and you you and you and you go, and you go, I'm cool with, yeah. with the one-hit wonder, and if he does good elsewhere, I'll draft him in a redraft league. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I think I think James Robinson is the future there for Jacksonville. He's someone I keep trying to get, and it's just not coming together, man. <laughs> I, 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 it drives me crazy. But James, I mean, I personally would take James Robinson just because of how I view value in Dynasty. I don't see it as what you had to pay to get him. I don't care what you had to pay to get him. I see Dynasty players as what their market value is right now, right? What is it? And I genuinely think that James Robinson deserves to be a, a you know, a, a higher, t I mean, at least a top 20 Dynasty running back, if not top 15. I mean, we could make the argument. Oh, for, question: Is he yeah. listed? A, is he is he listed ahead on fantasy pros? Of no, he's two spots behind him. That's why I want to bring him up. Yeah, ah, interesting. Interesting. So I would swap those guys. I'd probably swap those, which just keeps pushing Joe Mixon down, which is probably going to suck when he finally breaks is, out next season. If, but if I'm doing that swap and I'm getting and I'm trying to trade James Robinson for the Joe Mixon, yeah, I'm probably doing it. And I'm like, I'm trying to do like a trade back. Like this guy at the end of the first round has Joe Mixon. I got James Robinson. I want to move up maybe three or four slots. Like, hey, I'll yeah. swap you picks yeah and i'll give you this and you kind yeah. of move up you know that's, that's fair that would be my kind of thing i you think know, that's you... fair because you get the safety right it, you can just are guaranteeing safety with joe mixon because he has that floor he has the contract as long as he's healthy he's gonna be uh, at least an rb2 for the next couple of years right and james robinson he might not even be relevant in a year from now who knows um anyways that's the running backs. Let's transition to our wide receivers. Let's kick it off with the former dynasty wide receiver one. That is Michael Thomas, man. He suffered a high ankle sprain at the very start of the season, missed six weeks. And then we saw him struggle, man. He got, he got suspended a game for fighting another teammate. Like he, all these different things happened. I mean, 
he he struggled from a fantasy perspective even when he returned right and we can make the argument that while breeze wasn't under center we can also make the argument that maybe he was still struggling with that high ankle sprain yeah is it fair that i don't really buy the whole suspension oh what do you think happened dude i just don't think he was ready interesting and they kind of put the entry i don't know man that's some crazy conspiracy theory uh stuff but it, it's possible man it's possible he's definitely a, a hot tempered guy because it was such it was such a like thrown like yeah. shoved underneath the rug like oh he got suspended he's not playing this game yeah, and it like, just got kind of swept yeah. under the rug yeah and stuff that i'm like dude i'm not buying that yeah. but hey just me I am, i'm with you man and so he did have like he had a little i mean he had a couple good games with Taysom hill under center uh, and but two of those best games that he had were against the Atlanta Falcons. They played the Falcons, another team in the Falcons again. And I and I said it. I called this. I was like, man, they're gonna play the Falcons. He's gonna have a great game, and people are gonna get all excited about Michael Thomas again, who, no matter who the quarterback is. And I get it, man. He, I mean, he's currently on IR, um, but uh, dude, he has the big contract. Uh, he's plays for Sean Payton, who I think is an offensive genius. He uh, he has the talent for it. Um, the, this is what it comes down to. Does Breeze come back next season? No. No. So I don't think so either. The reports are that he isn't. So if that's the case, who's under center? We don't really know. Probably Taysom Hill. Maybe Jameis Winston. Uh, and with this uncertainty of who's under center, again, we know the offense he plays on. We know the contract. We know his ability. How far does he fall in your dynasty rankings for you? Because he's no longer even a top three dynasty wide receiver for me. For me? Yeah. Let's say this is 10, 10, 10, uh, 10 team league. Yeah, and he's turning 28 years old, which I think is I'm not drafting him in the first round, but if somehow I can get him in the second, I yeah. am I am like, here we go. Okay, and is this two quarterback or one quarterback league? Two quarterback league. Two, two okay, quarterback league. Yeah. You know, if I can somehow get Michael Thomas in the second round. Yeah. Um, And that's if you're building a team that you want to compete now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, but I, you know, I'm of the mindset where I'm not drafting him in the first round. Mm-hmm. The receivers I'm drafting in the first round are Tyreek, um, still Devonte Adams. As long as Rogers oh, yeah. is there, you have yeah, to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Stephon Diggs. Okay, you take Stephon. Diggs. Okay, so let's play a couple of this or that uh, the game real fast, right? So you would take Stephon Diggs over him at this point. Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. Okay, what about DK Metcalf? Right, twenty-three years old, freak of nature. I would, I oh, definitely would. Yeah, uh, I think you have to, especially because the quarterback he's tied to. Um, then uh, AJ Brown, young, talented. I-, I believe in Ryan Tannehill, but I could see you drawing the line there. I, I think I'd probably still take Michael Thomas if I'm if I'm ready to compete now. Yeah, if I'm building for the five ten year or five year like my team now. I'm taking Brown, but you know if I'm. Anyways, you get what I'm yeah. saying. No, 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 I get what you're saying because it, it's just, it's so 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 tough to rank dynasty wide receivers. It's one I mean, of the most difficult things I I, I, I try. I mean, to I do, took man. DJ Moore at the beginning of the third round ahead of a ton of receivers. Yeah, yeah. And I did that because of how young he was. I was like, I'm yeah. willing to wait. Exactly, and you can make that argument with so many different players. Like, you could sit here and convince me that you should take Justin Jefferson over Michael Thomas. Honestly, it wouldn't take much convincing. I would personally, no, right yeah, now, yeah, take Justin Jefferson yeah, over too. Michael Thomas. I would too. So this is how I see it, man. I, I think that Devonte Adams, DK Metcalf, uh, Tyree Kill, DeAndre Hopkins, Justin Jefferson should all be ranked over Michael Thomas. At least those five or six guys, whatever I just named. But then you have that tier of. AJ Brown, right? Who's still arguably in that tier above, but then you have the Calvin Ridley's, the Stephon Diggs, the Chris Godwin's of the world that I think he's closer to that tier than he is. And I would still take Stephon and Chris Godwin over Michael Thomas. Over Michael Thomas. Wow. So, I mean, dude, at that point, if you have him ranked that way, all those guys would still be on the board in a 10 team court in a 10 team startup draft in the second round. Like, can you center the running backs and the quarterbacks that are taken at that point? He'd probably interesting so if it sounds like late second early third is where you take him in a startup draft yeah around 30 interesting so uh interesting that's really yeah i have him at that same range he you know still top 10 dynasty wide receiver because of everything we just mentioned but he's more in the eight to nine range uh that being said man it's very possible that his value right now is i mean the lowest of probably it'll be the lowest it is for the until he's done yeah 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 i mean i could see once he has an off season with Taysom hill they start or or Jameis winston he might start bouncing back is he someone that you'd start sending low ball offers for because i know in our league the the michael thomas owners fed up 
right? I, I'm sure I could, you know, send, I don't know what exactly you'd have to offer, but I'd send a first round. I mean, I think you'd have to pay probably a little bit more, but I'd send a first round pick for Michael Thomas. Like I would depend, I mean, yeah, probably first round regardless. Uh, just because I, I really do value top tier uh, dynasty wide receivers. I think he, I think he's probably worth two firsts yeah. minimum. Yeah. Yeah. So he's still you know. top tier guys. Don't come hate us. Like you're saying that we should drop Michael Thomas, but it's just, he's not as he's not, of course, the dynasty wide receiver one anymore. Um, and he's lower tier for sure, man, for sure. Uh, the sweet, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Michael Thomas? Uh, no, yeah. I, I'm a, I, I'm gotta be honest. I'm a Bucks fan. You're not going to see me. Own, <laughs> you're not going to see me own very many saints. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> All right, man, let's move to someone real quickly. Let's talk about Julio Jones, right? Just Julio Jones. I mean, he was drafted as, in redraft leagues, as a top five wide receiver this past off season. Uh, he missed nine games this season off and on for multiple different injuries. And he didn't really perform in the games he played. He was all right. He was still, uh, a mid-tier wide receiver too in most games, but it wasn't amazing. It wasn't the production we're used to seeing from Julio Jones. Crazy little known fact, Julio Jones is under contract till 2024. So if I'm him and I understand the injuries and I said, why would I stop playing football if they're going to keep paying me all this money just to be out on the field? Like, I don't know, man. If I'm him, I don't think it's super likely that he retires, but there are a lot of injuries that he'll get traded. Right, there's a lot of injury or not injury. So there's a lot of rumors that he'll get traded. Something might happen this offseason. The Falcons are rebuilding. They need picks. I could totally see a team that's missing that one wide receiver. Dude, I mean, I could see, honestly, I could see the Ravens picking up that contract, making a move for Julio Jones, and then going and winning the Super Bowl. Right. I could see that happening. I I I didn't realize he was under contract for so long. Um, but I could see that happening. That all being said, man, um, what would you do with Julio Jones? If you're the Julio Jones owner, do, do you even have any interest in him in Dynasty, like in a startup? Me? Like, Yeah. No. I yeah. think Julio Jones is done. Interesting. From fantasy, just period. Yeah. I think he's just done, man. Yeah. Like, if you battle hamstring injuries all year long, yeah. like, and he's over 30, correct? He's 32? He's, he's 32. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, ugh. Yeah. I mean, at, at running backs and receivers, unless if you're Frank Gore or Larry Fitzgerald, <laughs> yeah. you, you hit that. As, let me yeah. put it this way. When you're a super freak athlete, yeah, Julio Jones was a super freak athlete coming out of Alabama. Oh, yeah. Super freak. Drafted in the yeah. top 10. Super freak athlete. Those super freak athletes hit the wall. And when they hit the wall, it hits mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. Their bodies yeah. don't recover as quickly. Their steps just aren't as quick they hurt longer yeah. you know and so i i don't know if this is a good comparison man but just look at what happened to todd Gurley. super freak athlete hit the wall and now he's being like now what ito smith or brian hill he's getting carries over him i right? so I, I understand what you're saying right we were scared of this wall hitting if i'm the julio jones owner i'm trying to sell for anything i can get right but i'm not i'm not selling it now i'm not selling him now because i think his value is super low when he's injured i would wait till free agency I'd see what happened in free agency. And if he does get traded, or let's say hypothetically speaking, Julio Jones gets traded to the Ravens, to the Patriots, to, if someone who's trying to contend this season, the moment it happens, the moment it happens, I'm reaching out to whoever just won the championship in our league, said, hey man, you have a late second round pick. I'll take that late second round pick and here's Julio Jones on the Ravens. That's what I would do. I don't know if you could get that, but that's what I would be doing. I was trying to get anything I can to sell. What, and if he does get traded, which would be nuts, yeah. but if yeah. he does get traded, I think what I would do is I'd say he goes to the Ravens. Yeah. I'm hitting up whoever has Lamar Jackson. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm going, Hey, you want the stack? Yeah. Yeah. Give me, and then you get, you either go for a piece that you like a younger piece that you like, or you go for a pick. Yeah. Or both, you know, and yeah. you go, Hey, I'll give him, give you the stack. And they're going to be like, they're going to be hyped. Like, Oh, Lamar got Julio. That'd be awesome. And yeah. it's like, dude, every time Lamar throws a touchdown to Julio, you'd be like bonkers. Yeah. And if you're, and yeah. if you're the, let's say he goes to the Ravens. If you're the Lamar owner, you're like, dude, I got to get this guy. Yeah. You know? I don't know like, if I would though. I don't know if I would. I, I, my interest in Julio is zero to nothing at this point, just in the sense that I, I want, I want guys on my dynasty roster who are trending up. Right, I want all oh, of everyone around, and and he's just someone who his value will only continue to depreciate. So he's not someone I want on my roster. Uh, someone I would try to move for anything at this point. Um, speaking of players who can move, let's talk about Kenny G. 
Let's talk about Kenny Galladay up at this point, man. He strained his uh, hip flexor, it looks like, on November 1st. Uh, returned to practice, right, after a couple weeks, uh, but then never played again, right? He returned to practice uh, a couple weeks in mid-November, never came back, and they said he tweaked it. He said he's super competitive, that he want, it wasn't a business decision, but the reality is, is that the Lions have nothing to play for. Neither the team's in shambles. They just fired their head coach, and players were rejoicing, and, uh, and Kenny Galladay is going to be a free agent next season, uh, and that all being said, man, I actually, Kenny Galladay is another one on this list who I would be trying to buy right now. Kenny Galladay is definitely someone I'm trying to buy right now. Uh, he was the wide receiver 20 in 2018. He was the wide receiver 9 in 2019. And someone's going to pay him. Whether it's the Lions who are rebuilding, who are going to have the new uh, head coaching staff with with hopefully a new quarterback, or even if it's Matt Stafford, who cares? Like He's going to have fantasy value. Someone's going to pay him. He's going to see the targets moving forward, whether it's the Lions, whether it's the Ravens, whether it's the Packers. Who knows, man? Someone's going to be paying this man, and he's going to be fantasy viable. Uh, he's not. He's only like, what, 26, too? Let me pull that up real fast. He's younger as well. And this is what it all comes down to, man. My strategy, this would be my strategy because timing is everything in Dynasty, guys. Time, the, timing is everything. I would wait till the night before the draft, right? I would, I would, before your rookie draft. I would let the combine pass. I would let the NFL, uh, the NFL draft pass, and I would wait till draft eve, right? The night before, everyone's going to bed. Everyone's done all their research. They're so excited for the players they're going to be able to draft, the players they're going to pick up. And I would offer the team who has Kenny Galladay a first round, a mid to late first round pick to kick Kenny Galladay. That's what I would do. I know that guy is going to sleep and he's excited for these wide receivers and he should be. This wide receiver class is amazing. But Kenny Galladay is someone who's going to be paid. He's someone who's decently young compared to most uh, dynasty wide receivers. And he, I mean, dude, he has the talent. He's someone I would be trying to acquire once hype is at its peak because I think you can pay that for him. A single first round pick and you can have Kenny Galladay on your team. That's my rant, man. What are your thoughts on Kenny Galladay? Are you buying on him? Where do you think he's going to land? Those are all my questions. Where I think <laughs> he's going to land? Yeah. Um, I think he's going to be a Raven. Interesting. I, I think the Lions are going to pay him. That's what I think is going to happen. But who knows? I, I I think that's just the most likely thing. But who knows? I mean, yeah. I don't know. I'm curious. I, 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 really, I really have no idea where he's going to go. But regardless, it sounds like you have him as a buy. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally, totally. Especially if he... I'm not as infatuated with him if he's if he returns as a lion. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, eh, but I don't like lion players. Interesting. I don't. Yeah. I don't you know, I don't and know, unless if they got an, I mean, they're getting a new GM. They'll be getting a new yeah. everything. Yeah. So unless if they have a home run hire, like a like a Lincoln Riley type of thing, or someone I just love. Yeah. I'm just kind of like a. Eh, yeah. A, that's that's just a franchise. I just steer clear. DeAndre Swift, great example. Yeah. You never would have seen me drafting it. Not once. Hmm. Interesting. Inter it's funny that you say that because I, I mean, if they do bring in, you know, they draft Zach Wilson, for example, and have him sit behind Matt Stafford and they have the new head coach, I, I think that Kenny Galladay would be worth it. But again, with my strategy, with drafting him or trading for him the night before the draft, you're going to know it. all of it. Yeah, you're going to know it. Yeah, I love that strategy. I think yeah. if you're going to do it, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Um, Especially, especially if Kenny G returns to the Lions, yeah. Kenny G owners will not be pleased to see him yeah. on the Lions again. Yeah, they will be, gladly, that'll be his. Yes, yeah. they will gladly be like, oh, "Dude, screw this. Here you go. Yeah, I yeah. can get a first round pick for this guy. All right, I'll do it. You yeah. know. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, dude, I agree. So that that's the strategy. That's what I would do. That's what we would be doing. Kenny Galladay's a buy at this point. Let's talk about Debo Samuel. Uh, someone I actually tried to trade for today. Uh, a little live update for you. I've been making trade offers for Debo Samuel the past couple days. But uh, we all we all know about his extent. Well, for Trey has him, right? And I, I know, know yeah. he's a running back, so I'm making trade offers. Debo Samuel, man, someone I'm trying to acquire right now. I get it. He has an extensive injury history, man. He broke his fibula back in college. He missed a game in 2019. He had that Jones fracture uh, back in June where he needed surgery for it. And then he strains his hamstring and is just barely playing at all this season. He's out for the rest of the season. I understand the injury concern, right? And I also understand that this is a run first offense and that Kittle and Ayuk and Debo will all be healthy going into next season, which will be the first time we see all three of them out there from what I understand. Uh, and so his targets are uncertain, 
right? We don't really know what his target output's gonna be like. I think the days of people hyping up Debo Samuel as a wide receiver one, I don't know if they exist anymore, right? Just because of the target, uh, the offense he plays in, I think his targets are limited. Um, but, but that being said, he was a top 10 fantasy wide receiver in 2019 as a rookie uh, on the second half of uh, last season because of the offense he plays in, right? I just talked about it because the way Shanahan gets him the ball or whether it's the jet sweeps, the screen passes, man, he's just getting the ball and messing people up. If he can come back from injury, which I'm hoping, uh, I do believe he will and he'll be healthy going into next season. I think he'll still be solid, right? I still think he's be solid. So I think, I don't know, man, I trust the offense. In, in, when it comes to what they're going to do with Debo, I trust his ability. What would you be doing? Are you even interested in Debo right now? You know, I've talked about him before, but I'm curious where you stand. Um, personally, for my team, I'm not interested in Debo, but that's okay. because I already have Jalen Hurd. Yeah, yeah. Who is another guy that tours ACL in training camp. We'll yeah. See what, he's injury ridden, but dude yeah. is, uh, he is an athletic freak. Yeah. Um, but Debo, no, I love Debo. You know, I and I think honestly, if Trey's team is loaded with Niners, he's got to get rid of at least one of them. <laughs> yes, man. And I think so. For context for everybody, uh, I think I can't remember exactly what I was offering, but I think I was offering I, it was Kareem Hunt and the third round pick that you traded me for Debo Samuel. And I think his second, I think it was. So he's getting a later pick. I'm moving up in the draft. He's getting Kareem Hunt, who is only 25. I think he's the RB8 on the season. I love Kareem Hunt, right? I, I'm a big Kareem Hunt fan. And I, I think that would be a perfect fit for his team. The reason I bring this up, I want to bring up a real life example for everyone listening of the offer I made. I'm not trying to go crazy. I'm not trying to sell everything. I'm not trying to send a first round pick to get Debo because I'd rather take every single wide receiver who's going in the first round of your rookie draft over Debo Samuel, right? I just would. That, that's how hyped I am for this upcoming wide receiver class. So I wouldn't be sending crazy offers, but someone I'm trying to acquire, man. Someone who I'm hoping can bounce back and someone who I think can still produce unlimited targets do, do you see it, it seems like every time he's on the field he's a wide receiver too right if you look at his stats if you look at him play do you see that potential outcome for him or, or what are your thoughts on uh, Debo here when you look back at the Niners when they made the playoff what yeah. was their do you remember what their biggest weakness was when they made it last season when they played the Chiefs Oh, it was the fact that they had no one to throw to pretty much wasn't yeah, it they're like offense was, yeah, was just struggling dude, you had yeah Emmanuel Sanders and and George Kittle. Outside yeah. of that, you didn't have anything. Yeah. Was, so Debo was hurt in the Super Bowl. He didn't play, right? No, dude. Uh, they were they were in shambles offensively yeah. with weapons. Yeah. So my th the thing for me is, I'm trying to buy all these young guys that the Niners are trying to get now because eventually a couple of them are gonna stick. Yeah. You know, Dante Pettis was one, and now he's with the Giants. He didn't stick. Yeah. Okay, they moved on to the next yeah. one. And now they got Ayuk, who seems to be the guy. They got yeah. Debo Samuel, who seems to be a guy. They got George Kittle. They got Jalen Hurt. You know, they got a bunch of young Kendrick Bourne even. You know, they got yeah. young guys, oh, yeah. like young role guys that are starting to learn. And I want guys that are in that offense for multiple years because it is a very intricate offense. You know, there's yeah. a lot that goes into it. Oh, yeah. You know, it's Kyle Shanahan, one of the best top three play caller in the NFL. Yeah and yeah absolutely and so i'm trying to buy the young guys and if the fact that they're hurt early on in their career and it's mm -hmm. not soft tissue stuff like hamstrings high ankle sprains acls things like that dude bye 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 yeah. Yeah. bye 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 <laughs> okay here's here's the question for you then you know my team super well you know i'm still looking for young wide receivers to fill my last flex spot you know his team super well, how badly he needs a running back at this point because he has devin singletary as his rb2 what are your thoughts on just unfiltered thoughts on the Kareem Hunt plus the late third round pick for Debo Samuel and his mid his mid to late second round pick? I don't uh, for Trey. I, I have a hard time taking that because okay. that's Trey's team needs so much help. Yeah, that him yeah. going from fifteen, let's say he fifteenth pick in the in the second round, yeah. fifteen yeah. sixteen to go from fifteen to thirty in this draft is big for yeah. no it's a big move you it's know a big move. yeah so, it just comes down to for at least my perspective on this trade offer he just has so many great young wide receivers and i think when it comes to the advantage he would be giving his team to have hunt who is the r who is an rb2 i think it would make him an actual contender i mean he made the playoffs this season i don't oh, i know i think i think it would work out great for him i just yeah. 
if I'm Trey, I'm probably tinkering that trade a little bit. Yeah, yeah. To make it where I know you want to get back into the second round. Yeah. Um, but to <laughs> where I don't like that 30th pick for him. I think okay. he's probably looking for either like a, another young pick okay. um, yeah. or something like that. Like, for example, I know you have and you probably wouldn't sell him. But if I'm Trey, I'll be like, all right, I'll do Debo in the second round pick mm-hmm. for Kareem Hunt and Zach Moss. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Because he has Devin Singletary. So yeah. it would give him the Bills backfield. Yeah, that's definitely something I would consider. It would leave me a little shallow at running back, but it doesn't matter, man. I got Jonathan Taylor, so I don't care how my (laughs) running back depth looks like. I have the GOAT who just dropped 37 points in fantasy today. I love Jonathan. Anyways, I had to mention him at least one this episode. You know that's how it works. Um, I I like it. I appreciate your analysis. I'll even make that offer to Trey. I'll send him the link to this video first. Trey, we're talking. This is like personal, personal advice. That's what I would do because I even looked at it when we did our Denzel Mims trade. I was like, man, I kind of want Zach Moss. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, I'm already so running back heavy and I don't need, I, I, I would be better off getting a younger receiver. But I know I legitimately thought about sending that same exact offer, but with Zach Moss. As opposed to Mims? Yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I probably probably would have had the same outcome. I probably, personally, man, if you want to swap Denzel Mims for Zach Moss, I'd do that right now. For sure. I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> I might even give you your 30th pick back just to get Mims back. We'll see. We can talk later. We can talk later, but we'll talk about it. Anyways. Let's talk about the next guy here for the people. Cortland Sutton, man. Ooh, Cortland Sutton here is a tough one. Uh, Torres ACL week two against the Steelers. Uh, projected to be fully healthy 2021. But again, we talked about are they going to be at maximum production again. Uh, broke out last season with incredibly mediocre quarterback play. I think it was like Joe Flacco under center. Um, and finishes the wide receiver 25 on the season. So had a good season, man, considering all things considered. A uh, former high second round pick by the Broncos. Him and fantasy was something I was never personally excited about, especially coming into this season. I was concerned because he finished as the wide receiver 25, so not even a top 24 fantasy wide receiver, just outside of that with a 35% dominator ranking, right? Now that's, that was sixth in the league. Now what a dominator ranking is, it is what percentage of team receiving touchdowns and team uh, receiving yards did this player have? So he had 35% of all of the Broncos receiving yards and all of the Broncos receiving touchdowns. And he didn't even finish top 24, right? He, he like, I'm just looking at him like, all right, man, you have a pie, which is the Broncos offensive production. He already had 35% and it still wasn't amazing. So I have a hard time looking at his ceiling, especially when they add Jerry Judy, who's going to be in year two, especially when Noah Fant continues to break out year three. I love Noah Fant. And then you got Drew Locke. I mean, Drew Locke's under center. He's looking inconsistent. And then their defense should be back and healthy next year. Cortland Sutton is an amazing wide receiver. He made some highlight real plays last uh, yeah, last year. But it's tough for me to ever see him come back because he was being talked as a top 24 dynasty wide receiver. Right? I don't know where I can pull up where he's ranked currently, but... He should be healthy next season and is still not someone I'm super excited for. Not someone I would go out and necessarily even buy low. I mean, hey, man, it, it, depending on the price, I'm down to buy low anybody. But I, I don't know if I'd even be reaching out. What are your thoughts here on Cortland Sutton? Um, I actually really like the Broncos offense. Interesting. Um, okay, wow. I really like the Broncos offense. Um, I like the pieces that they have. Okay, I mean, even for fantasy. Got, even for fantasy. Okay. Um. Because eventually it pans out. Now is Drew Locke the answer? Jury's out. Jury's yeah, out. Jury's yeah, out. We've talked about that. this before. Who, who really? Yeah, knows? <laughs> you know. So, and what the Broncos are going to do at the quarterback position is even more interesting than what people think about Drew Locke. Because it doesn't matter what me and you think about Drew Locke. It matters what John Elway thinks about Drew Locke. Oh yeah. Um. Now, if they got a legitimate quarterback there, they traded for a Matthew Stafford. Yeah. Dak if they somehow got Dak Prescott, oh, yeah. even if they brought in a Jameis Winston to go and compete for that job, they don't yeah. want to commit to a big guy like Matthew Stafford or Dak. I get that. But yeah. they want to bring in Jameis Winston on a $8 million contract. Go, hey, come be our backup or get the job if you can. We'll leave yeah. an open competition. I feel a thousand percent better about this, yeah. about this team. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and the thing is, last year, before Jerry Judy, before KJ Hamler, before Melvin Gordon, mm-hmm. they had Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, yeah, Noah Fant as a rookie, 
Mm-hmm. That was it. And <laughs> and and yeah. uh, Philip Lindsay. Yep. I mean, they didn't have a whole lot. Yeah. You know, they just did not have a whole lot of firepower. Good depth pieces, good players to have. You know, as as as, as you know, backups, but. And that's why his, I think it was capped because it's like, yeah, we're going to force feed him the ball because he can get his first downs. But overall, it's not going to be anything great because I don't think that offense ever had the volatility to be able to be put up huge numbers, like in terms of that dominator. Um, but I think that comes down to the quarterback position. So again, if you want to roll the dice on Cortland Sutton, I think it's the cheapest because question for you. Yeah. Yeah. Who's more expensive, Jerry Judy or Cortland Sutton? That, so in Fantasy Pros, they're ranked back-to-back, and Jerry Judy is one spot higher. Interesting. I, I personally would prefer Jerry Judy. I believe in the talent. Jerry Judy is someone who is probably another buy low, honestly, because I, I just believe in his uh, ability. Dude, his and route running is unbelievable. Oh, it's amazing, man. So Eventually, I guess it's going to pan out, you know? I would take Jerry Judy over Cortland Sutton right now, but you just made the argument that I made earlier in the episode that I've already seemed to – that I'm clearly not abiding by. And maybe I just don't believe in the player. But prioritize talent over situation. That's literally the argument you just made. That's literally, it will pan out if you believe in the player. Now, I personally, not the biggest Cortland Sutton fan. Uh, the situation maybe soured me. I'll probably get proven wrong, right? That's just my perspective. But if you believe in Cortland Sutton, a lot of people have the perspective that I currently have. A lot of people do. And I'll bet you he's someone you could definitely probably go out and buy low as well. Um, I think you could probably get Cortland Sutton right now for a late second round pick. Yeah. Yeah. I Legitimately. Think so and yeah. I think Jerry Judy is probably worth a late first, early second. Yeah. yeah. I think so too. Yeah. I think so. I could even see him like a mid. I think you could get him for that price, but I think he'd be worth even a little bit more like a, a mid first ish, depending. Uh, Jerry Judy. Talk- yeah. Jerry Judy. Yeah, definitely. Big bounce back guy. Uh, that's at least what I'm expecting. All right, we have a couple more guys just to wrap it up here. Let's talk about OBJ. You and I have already talked oh. about him on other episodes. I just put out a huge post on him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I mean, he's 28 years old, and he tore his ACL week seven, which sucks. Uh, at the end of this season, he will have missed 42% of his games due to injury over the past four years. 42% over four years? That's insane, man. Like, he's struggling with injury. Even when he was on the field, he's not super consistent. Uh, the volume of targets that he'll see in that run first Brown scheme, the scheme that he's under contract for, for the next until 2024 drastically caps his ceiling. So if he gets traded, I mean, we all seen the talent. We know the upside. If he lands in the right spot, I just have a hard time seeing him be anything more than a low end wide receiver two with upside on a week to week basis. Um, well, that has the injury struggles, man. So uh, the first question, I mean, OBJ, clearly in his position relies so much on explosive movements on cutting on jumping over other players making one-handed catches do we even see him 100 percent healthy throughout the first six weeks of 2021 again he got hurt week seven so if that's the case man if he's already limited because of targets and isn't fully healthy halfway through the season how, how do we value him like if you own him i think you hold him because his price is super low and it's just another situation where hopefully he gets traded or comes back and is healthy but he's not someone I'm even interested in acquiring right now because I think his name has that price. Well, I'll have to pay a little bit too much, but I don't know, man. What are your thoughts here on OBJ? Um, right. uh, I mean, we're mono a mono, you know, it's, it's tough because the Browns have, they want to use two tight ends, which means they're only going to have, they want to use two tight ends. And a lot of times they want to have a a, a fullback in there and a running back. So there's only one receiver out there, yeah. you know, like they are, they, uh, there are almost always two tight ends on that field for him. Yeah. And that means there's only two receiver slots and Jarvis Landry is going to have one. And I legitimately think Donovan Peoples Jones is going to take over that of second spot. Okay. Yeah. And I just, whether uh, if OBJ comes back healthy, obviously you got to see what he can do. And when he's yeah. healthy, yeah, man, he's great. But not a not a buy for me, um, unless if someone's literally throwing him away. Yeah, yeah, which I could see happen. Which that's yeah. it's not like, possible. Like I could see someone, uh, like if someone dropped OBJ, obviously you got to. Oh, I'd absolutely. be curious. I, I'd be curious what what if you had a hundred dollars free agent auction if FAAB. I'm curious what he'd go for. Oh, I'd use all of it. I'd use all of it to get OBJ. But this is the question for you, okay? You have a late second round pick, right? We're talking 
late second round pick. You're a contender at this point. Would you, cause of course you have the late second round pick. Would you make that move to get OBJ, right? You're not outside the top 15 picks of this upcoming rookie draft. I think you got to consider it. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd uh, consider it. Yeah. I'd consider it. Yeah. It's tough, man. It's tough. Another one. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. And again, dude, in Dynasty, there's rarely a right answer. But no. these, these are just my feelings on it. This is just my feelings on it. But I don't want to talk about OBJ anymore. Me neither. Because uh, I, I, we talked so about so over it. I'm, I'm so, so over, it. over it, man. I'm just so over it. But let's talk about a guy I'm really excited to talk about. A guy that I don't know how I'm going to do it. We're, we're going to do some something, man. You're going to come out here for the game, and we'll just drink, and then I'll get you to trade me. Paris Campbell. Man, I don't know how I'm going to do it, man. I might have to, like, I don't I don't know what we're going to do. But one way or another, I want Paris Campbell on my team. Uh, drafted in the very middle of the second round uh, to the Colts la- uh, two years ago. A lot of hype coming out, uh, coming into the NFL, man. He ran a 4 3 one The man's fast, in case you guys are wondering, out of Ohio State. The man is fast. Uh, the problem is here, uh, he has struggled with many, many, many injuries. Like, it is, he, I don't even know how many games total he's played since coming into the NFL. But I'll pull up uh, on the screen for the people uh, his extensive injury history man he strained his hamstring in the preseason of 2019 he had an abdominal strain week four of 2019 was out four weeks uh, because he needed surgery then he fractured his hand man that same year week 10 fractured his hand i needed surgery was out another four weeks uh week 14 same year fractures his foot dude oh like oh, come on like you just feel bad for the guy at this point uh preseason 2020 praying for health has a concussion in the preseason and then um, week two after having a very solid week one with Phillip Rivers under center of the 2020 season uh, sprains his MCL and PCL uh, for the rest of the season uh, brutal brutal man but that all being said he is still what 23 years old yeah he's uh, 20 yeah 23 years old uh, we all know about we all know the combination of his physical ability and, and I mean, T.Y. Hilton's a free agent next season, man. So be targets available, right? Uh, we don't know who the quarterback's going to be, but targets available. Uh, here's a question for you: Do you think he's 100% starting 2021? Yes, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, you're the Paris Campbell owner right now on live. If I were to offer you my second round pick, which you already have, but if I were to offer you the 201, which is the 11th overall pick for Paris Campbell. What decisions would you be making in the moment? If I didn't have it? Yeah, if you didn't have it. Hypothetically speaking, last night never happened. I still have my high second round pick. I want Paris Campbell. What would you think about it? If I wouldn't do it until draft night. Yeah, yeah. But if I'm just going to call him if X player that I want at that point is yeah. there. You yeah. hate that. You hate that. I, I just I hate say it so much, man. The people need to know you're depriving the people. What am I supposed to do? Anybody. What am I supposed to do? Put, no. put all my information out on public. Exactly. For everyone to know. No, exactly. I can't do that. <laughs> my whole, my whole, the next three to four years of my whole dynasty experience <laughs> comes down to these five picks. It's true. It's true. Well, I really do look forward to the entire video that we're going to make analyzing what you did in the draft because it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time. Anyway, um, but back if Paris X Campbell. player was yeah. there and the price was Paris Campbell, yeah. I wouldn't think twice about it. Interesting. You, you would hold on. You would go after X player. You, you, you I would go Paris after Campbell. X player. Okay. So wait, I hold wouldn't on. think twice about it. You're the Paris Campbell owner, man. What are your thoughts? What are your feelings? Where are you at? Oh no, I love Paris Campbell. I think yeah. him and Michael Pittman are a great duo. I love. I love Frank Reich. I think they're going to continue. I think, I think, um, Phil Rivers holds that offense back terribly. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And, I agree. And I think if they like, dude, imagine what Andrew Luck would be doing with that offense. Oh, you know, oh, yeah, we can only dream, you know? And so yeah. I, I love Paris Campbell. I watched him at Ohio state. Dude was awesome. Like dude was awesome. So yeah. fast. He so was, fast. uh, he was the, guy that replaced curtis samuel yeah. but played less running back and was and so he played didn't carry the ball didn't really like get like like dive plays type like like yeah. curtis samuel did but got a lot of jet sweeps got a lot of deacon Do- he paris campbell got dwayne haskins paris campbell and terry mclaurin got dwayne haskins drafted i'll just put it that way yeah. and if you think terry yeah. mclaurin's that good uh paris campbell 
I mean, it's just that it's just as good, but he was just so flipping fast. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting, man. No, I did. I agree. I agree. And again, you and I were talking about this earlier. If you didn't have Paris Campbell, I would have him on my team because I would have traded for him. But you you clearly also understand how good he is. So there's no way I'm ever going to touch him, which breaks my heart a little bit. That's all right, man. Let's uh, uh, We are getting close to running out of time here. So let's quickly talk about a couple tight ends. Uh, let's talk about George Kittle. Let's talk about George Kittle. I mean, I know he's healthy right now. Uh, and I understand that he missed uh, the majority of this season uh, with, I believe it was a foot injury. But he's back. He's healthy, and he should still be a top-tier dynasty tight end. But it, uh, you were telling me about – just give me your perspective on George Kittle real fast. Right? Here's the thing. We yeah. talked about this before we hopped on, but I'll we'll reiterate it. George Kittle is never going to be cheaper absolutely. than right now. Yep, absolutely. A. Secondly, mm-hmm. if you're looking for red flags about George Kittle, it's the way he plays. Mm. But I love the way he plays, but you got to know he's going to miss some games. Yeah. It's because like of how wrong, he plays. Right? Dude, almost, yes, yeah. he's a, he's the same. Darren Waller and Travis Kelsey are the same finesse type of mold when it comes yeah. to tight end. Jimmy Graham would be definitely in that conversation when Jimmy Graham was like in his prime uh, with the Saints and Drew Brees, you know, back in the day. Yeah, like, yeah. just like, I'm just going to go catch these jump balls and you're not going to be able to do anything about it. That's Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller. George Kittle is, is like the Gronk. You know, yeah. he is the guy that's going to come in. And if you're not ready to get blocked, he's going to put you into the ground. Yeah. And if you think he's going to block you and you're scared or you're expecting you're trying to brace for it, he's going to run past you. Yeah. Um, no, I, if you can get George Kittle, you do it and you pay whatever the price is. Interesting. In my opinion, because yeah. if you really want him, because yeah. yeah, whatever the price is now will still be significantly lower than it will be this year next time or yeah. this time next year interesting now i agree with you man i agree and if i'm a contender and the team who had george kittle probably struggled considering he missed most of the season with injury i'm offering tj hawkinson who i love right tj hawkinson is a baller he's a i mean he's an athlete but like you and i've talked about before um there's a reason why he's not top three just because the offense because of his blocking he's not necessarily going to be a Anyways, I don't want to dive into it because uh, I don't have all my thoughts written down in front of me. But TJ Hawkinson, I would offer Hawkinson and a second for George Kittle. And I, I don't know if that would even be considered. I don't know if I'd get laughed at, but that's the kind of trade I'd offer is, hey, man, here's TJ Hawkinson. Here's Noah Fant, who are still great tight ends, right? Who are still great. They, they have all the, the athletic profiles there. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's, they're just not in a situation. They're not that same level that George Kittle is. So I'm going to send you him in a pick for arguably the top tight end in Dynasty. And, and considering the season he had, depending on where the team's at, like if that team struggled and needs the pick, it might just happen, man. So I don't know. That's Those are my thoughts on George Kittle. Uh, would you, if you're the George Kittle owner, would you even I would not take that trade? Offer? Okay, yeah. No. See, uh, maybe I'm lowballing, man. What kind of, if you own George Kittle right now, you're holding him. But what would you have to accept? Uh, what, what what would you want for, for him at this stage? I actually just thought of this. Yeah. Let's say I get the 1.04 in our in our league. Yeah, yeah. Trey, what does Trey have the 105 or the 106? I think it's the 106, but he it's it's in there. Yeah. So let's say I had the 1.03 or 1.04. Yeah. I'd be like, hey man, move up, come get your quarterback or your running back, whoever you want. I'll give you Goddard, and you give me your pick and and uh, and George Kittle, and I'll throw in one of my second round picks. Hold on, break that down for me. So. so he's- he would get my top four pick. Yeah. And Goddard. Okay. And m- maybe like my late, like maybe like the 20th overall. Okay. The late yeah. second. Yeah. And I would get his pick and his and first. I would get his first. So I would move back three spots. Okay. So I would give him an extra pick. I would move back a couple spots and Goddard. I would get, I would get Kittle. Interesting. Interesting. So you think, so I mean, he's getting an extra pick. He's getting Goddard. Uh, but you think he, he would give up Kittle to move up three spots for an extra pick in Goddard. Well, the thing is, Trey is extremely running back needy. That's true. Um, yeah, that's and if true. you have the chance to move up for a Najee Harris, who's on the Steelers or an ETN yeah. type of thing. Yeah. And you get, and Trey's an Eagles fan. You get your, you get your Eagles player as well, which I use that angle on him all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's true. You, know, you, you get, you <laughs> have true. a chance. Yeah. Am I moving Kittle? No. But yeah. if I have the chance to move Kittle because Trey wants to move up, it's it's if I'm looking, Kittle is always a buy. 
yeah. always buy kittles like amazon always a buy <laughs> especially now man i think again it's the dip in amazon it was amazon uh back in april when the pandemic was first breaking out uh, all right, man. You're the Bucks fan. Let's tie this all together with uh, OJ Howard. And OJ Howard, who uh, looks like he, oh man, he ruptured his Achilles uh, in week four, right? And has and is missed the rest of the season since then. Uh, it hasn't really produced yet. There was a lot of hype on him coming into last season uh, with Gronk there, with Tom Brady under center, with an Arians offense. There's a lot of question marks around him, but there's no question around the talent. I mean, there's no question around, uh, I mean, he was in the 97th percentile in 40 yard dash. He was in 98th in speed score, 97th percentile in agility score in uh, 88th percentile in catch radius. He's a big dude. He's 6'6", 251. He's a big dude and he's strong and he's fast. Like, uh, anyways, man, you're the Bucks fan. He's been out injured all season. I don't even know how to value OJ Howard. What would you be doing right now? Uh, are you trying if to buy I had him? The uh, yes. Yeah. If I had the chance to buy him, especially if I don't need him, uh, you're trying to buy him as like your second, third tight end. Okay. That you kind of stash. Yeah. Um, the physical upside's there, but I honestly think his best friend is having Gronk on the team. Interesting. Yeah. I think he's going to learn so much from that guy and even yeah. and maybe even more so um, that he got to take a step back and literally got to watch Gronk how he game plans. Yeah. yeah and how true. he goes into week in, week out. Yeah. You know? And I think you can learn a lot between watching the relationship that Gronk, because the thing that OJ Howard has never had, he's never had the bona fide relationship with a quarterback. That's true. At Alabama, yeah. he never really, he didn't get a lot of targets. He was just awesome. He was just yeah. a freak. Yeah. He was just like, oh, you forgot about him. I'm going to throw it to him and he's going to outrun everyone. Exactly. You know, he's so yeah. good. But I don't think he really is. Yeah. I think he's just, I don't think he's a tight end. I think he's an athlete playing tight end, if that makes sense. There you go. You know, and I think he needs to learn how to be a tight end. Yeah. yeah. And I think he's learning from the best. Interesting. Yeah. And let me look at his contract because they, Bucks have Cameron Brait through 2023. Oh, that's right. They signed him to that extension, didn't they? Or something yes. like that. Yeah. So it was, uh, he pretty much gets paid $7 million a year. Um, let me tell you what OJ Howard is, but yeah, through 2023. Now OJ Howard is signed. He is next year is his last year. And then he's a free agent. Hmm. Interesting. So interesting. So now's the time to buy low because for two reasons, one, if he's on the bucks, he's going to replace Gronk. Yeah. Because I, do you think Gronk plays after next year? No, not after next year. No, I, I think, have a hard I think next season. year is yeah. his last year and that's it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. one more, but that's it, you know. Yeah. But OJ Howard, if he's on the Bucks and replaces Gronk, awesome. If OJ Howard gets signed by someone else and goes to like, dude, the flippant Chiefs to replace Travis Kelsey type of thing, like yeah. they sign him on a cheap year deal, he learned to find Travis Kelsey for a year or two type of thing, and does that like. Yeah. I think wherever he lands, a team's going to know how to utilize him. And if it's on the Bucks, I think Bruce Arians is learning how to use tight ends from Tom Brady. Yeah. And I think OJ Howard's learning how to be a tight end from Gronk. And if he ends up as in the, if he's a Buck, awesome. He's going to be good. He's going to be solid. I think if he's not a Buck, he's going to flourish somewhere else. Yeah. And this is another situation, man. Talent over situation. Uh, talent over circumstance. This is just what we're seeing time and time again. It's like it who knows if it will pan out, but he's dirt cheap right now. You can easily, easily send a third round pick probably and snag him. Um, I, I would not doubt that right now. So I, yeah, he's a buy, but again, someone that I would not expect a lot of, but has the potential moving down there because of the physical ability, because the fact that he's a free agent, I'm with you, man. I'm with you hundred percent guys. That's it. I think we made it. I that was what two hours, something crazy like that. We talked about all these different injured players if you're still with us congratulations man I, I don't know how you made it through all i think i like blacked out halfway through this episode uh that all being said go follow me on instagram at fantasy.football.buff dm us your fantasy questions for monday december 11th halftime live on youtube we're gonna be talking and answering all of your dynasty questions as we appreciate your time don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time peace